Marine Corps' way of life is to defend the American way of life. Every day, we take a stand for our nation, for each other, for us all. The few, the proud, the Marines. Talking with Sergeant Weber of the U.S. Marine Corps, and co uh, Sergeant, uh, we've well, been a Marine a long time, and of course the Marines are involved with the Great American Battle Series. How did you get involved with the Marine Corps, and then how did they get involved with the Great American Battle Series? Uh, really, how the Marine Corps became involved with this is because a lot of things about football is the same thing in the Marine Corps. You talk about camaraderie, you talk about fellowship, and you talk about a team sport and building a good community. Those are the basic foundations for the Marine Corps. And you've been a Marine how long? Nine years now. Nine years. And, and you see guys like this out here. I know some of these are going to college, and I know some of them are going to not only as Marines, but maybe another branch of the military. Absolutely. Um, we're just here really to show our support for the uh, for the teams themselves and to show that we are a part of this community. So whether they go to college or whether they do enlist, either way, so long as they're successful, we'll be happy. For high school football in the Great American Rivalry Series, it's Central Dolphin East against Harrisburg High School. Brought to you by the U.S. Marines as we get you set for kickoff here on in South Central Pennsylvania on a beautiful day. I'm Darren Douglas along with Warren Ritter providing commentary for us. Because this is simply a rivalry. Yes. Five miles apart these two schools are and it is going to be something else to watch. It's going to be a beautiful game. Beautiful day as we mentioned. It was overcast this morning. It had some rain. It has since subsided. The clouds now are white above us which is a good sign. Right. Uh, it is fairly windy but uh, won't be a factor, I don't think, on the field level because I was down on the field earlier and the, and the wind was not much of a factor down. It might uh, make punts and kickoffs today. Well, you have two explosive teams. I mean, both teams is very strong defensively, so it's going to be a hell of a game. Looking forward to it. Getting ready to have the national anthem. I'm glad to be here down south <laughs> as we come up here from Kentucky to do this. And of course, you played uh, yes. in this rivalry. Yes. Uh, you also. Uh, know a lot about both schools, so yes. therefore that's why we have you uh, our analysis this afternoon, and both these schools really will get after each other defensively. Yes, they will. I appreciate the invite. Thank you. Getting ready to have the national anthem here uh, from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. This is a beautiful facility here. Uh, as we look at uh, the field from across the way, the school in the background uh, as you get uh, the captains walking out to the middle of the field for, for East, it will be Jaheen Nabauer, right, along with Quincy McIntyre, Justice Jacobs, and the three captains along with Quentin Smith, Smith, number yes. two for the Panthers, and for the Cougars, it will be Jamel Sawyers, yes. along with Warren Ritter, yes. and I believe that's number 52. 51. Yep, 52. Jaquan Sawyers. So Two twins. The twin brothers are the captains, <laughs> and we're getting the toss of the coin here at the center of the field. And you see the Marine Corps representatives in the middle of the field as well. Sergeant Weber is the one to your left, and Sergeant Santos to your right. And it looks like... East will receive. Uh, Look like Harrisburg won the toss and deferred, and East wants the football to start. They want the ball. <laughs> so usually uh, most teams do defer. Right. Especially with defenses like these two have. These right. two have pretty good defenses, so we made points maybe at a minimum. It's going to be something. They're fast. This is two of the fastest teams in this area when it comes to defense. So it's going to be a fast game. So. Harrisburg in the all black with the silver helmets, the silver numbers, with a little bit of white on the trim. And across the way in the black pants, the black helmets, Central Dolphin East, with the black numbers and red trim. And as we get the presentation of colors from the Harrisburg ROTC here, and we'll have the national anthem from Severance Field here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania.
Nah, he's doing good. That is always a, a big game on this situation. <laughs> Sometimes our technical difficulties, they have to get a field mic down to some young ladies that are going to sing the national anthem here from Severance Field. And it is homecoming, by the way, for Harrisburg as well as we now get the national anthem. The Great American Rivalry Series is brought to you by the United States Marines. The few, the proud, the Marines. By Toyota, let's go places. By AT&T, mobilizing your world. And by Safeco Insurance, what matters to you? Excitement in the air like there is with Friday Night Football, especially out here in West Texas. It's all about the it's on the field, also the cheerleaders. But when it comes time to put the helmets on on Friday nights, then we hate each other for about 48 minutes. You have to For the 20, 15, 10, he's going to take it to the house. He's to the five, breaks the tackle, and touchdown. It's Great American Rivalry Series. Kicking off, and it is Joel Davis putting a toe to it and sending it down to Quentin Smith who bobbles it at it. the eight. Picks it up, stutter steps, and it'll get up over the 15 to about the 17 yard line. Knocked down by Kanai Little for Hillsborough or Hillsburg, Harrisburg. I'm sorry, I'm going to get this right here. Harrisburg, <laughs> as we'll start moving left to right on your computer screen with Dolphin East. Offense led by quarterback Newbauer. Jahad Nybauer. And 
He is the running quarterback of the two. They will play two. Justice Jacobs will also see some action. Yep, he's a pretty good lefty. Hey, Bauer, the junior, barks out the signals and sends Crummy in motion. They'll hit a screen out to the left side. A tackle broken at about the 21-yard line. They're going to be up for a gain of nine to Elam. To look at his wideouts. He's pretty fast. His nickname is G. He's a pretty fast kid. G. Yes. Yep. And quickly, a nine-yard gain for the Panther offense. Up front for the Panthers, it's Dix in the center. Bailey and Moore, the guards. The tackles are Clark and Holmes. They give it off on the jet sweep to Elam. He's going to get close to the first down. It'll depend on the spot. Might be a little shy as they come in about the 27-yard line. And on the stop for the Cougars. Looks to be number 34, Jordan. I'm sorry, that's uh, Andre Young, the junior linebacker for Harrisburg. So it'll be third, actually lost a yard, so it'll be third and two. Twin receivers to either side. The running back. There's Joe LaMail. The right. Yep, there's Joe LaMail. And he'll give it off to LaMail off the left side, a big hole. He'll get it up over the 35. It'll be a first down for. Central Dolphin East at the 42-yard line, and a huge hole on the left side. Looked like Lando Holmes and Makai Moore. Uh, Holmes 6'2", 250. Moore 6'2", 220. And Holmes the senior, and Moore the only a sophomore. Yes. <laughs> and opened up a big hole. So a first down at the 42-yard line for the Panthers in the end. Opening drive of the ball game. We're just underway with 10.25 to play. Clock running in the opening quarter. Bunch receiver to the right. They send him one in motion back to the left. Highbauer in trouble. Face Up mask. Up middle and going to get a face mask. Good oh, call yeah. there, Coach. <laughs> Easy call as two officials, actually three of them. And I believe that was, again, on the stop for Harrisburg was Andre Young, and he got a piece of the face mask. Now, whether it be the, the five-yard or the 15-yard variety is what we'll have to wait and see. It'll be the personal foul variety, so 15 yards, an automatic first down for the Panthers on their opening drive of the ball game, and they break the midst field strike into Cougar territory. It is 15. So a wow. 15-yard penalty down to the 41-yard line of Harrisburg. It'll be two receivers to the right side, here the near side. They'll have two wing backs and one back to the left. Nybauer, the lone man in the backfield. Busted play, uh -oh. and he's going to be fumble, off the fumble. ball game loose. It looks like Harrisburg has it. Looked like a busted play. He expected maybe uh, one of the wing backs to come around um, back towards him in, in a jet sweep type play, but. Uh, Man. Forced fumble from Harrisburg. I didn't see who the defender was that got his hand in there, but he also was the re recovery player as well. I think that might have been number 20. Might have been uh, Joel Davis for Harrisburg. But nonetheless, the Cougars now will take over on offense, led by quarterback Mikhail Clark, 6'1", 190, and a senior. He committed to St. Francis earlier this year. PA. Yes, sir. Just to let everybody else over the United States know, there's a couple others as well. Here's a pass out of the flat, wide open. Is the receiver for Harrisburg. He breaks a tackle at the 25. He'll go in standing. Touchdown, Touchdown. Harrisburg. And just like that, the home standing Can I little. Cougars. And that was a just a, a simple play where they got him open in the flat, Coach. And then at the 25, he broke a tackle. That was a nice run by Kanai Little. Very nice run. So Harrisburg strikes first on homecoming day for the Cougars to lead. 6 to nothing with 9.41 to play. And the extra point coming from Davis. Kick is up. And good. good. So we are a minute. 
Harris. Two minutes, 19 seconds into this one. Harrisburg strikes first. They lead 7 to nothing over Central Dolphin East. Harrisburg, one play, it goes 48 yards for the touchdown. They lead it seven to nothing after the conversion. This is Smith from his five. Angles off to the right side, looking for a block. Gets around the corner, cuts it up, steps out of bounds. Ooh. I think at about the 34 yard line. Let's see where the official marks it. Official took a shot out of bounds in the knee. And I think they're going to mark him out at the 30. Actually, the 28 yard line. It looks like. It's a return of 23 yards for Quentin Smith. And that's where the Panther offense will go back out and try to rectify this 7-0 deficit after one play from Harrisburg. Dave Bauer back in at quarterback with Lamel to his right in the backfield. Three receivers to the near side. Oh, there's another fumble. Another fumble and Harrisburg back it's Another ball. Double looks, yep, still loose. Oh. Picked up and... Down goes, uh, is that Davis again? Yes, that was Davis. Uh, Joel Davis with the recovery, his second recovered fumble in ah. as many defensive plays for the Cougars. So Harrisburg coach, uh, a couple of fumble recoveries. One they turned into points after one play. Let's see if they can do the same thing here again. Clark brings his offensive unit out. He sends twin receivers here to the near side. The tight end also to the left. One receiver back to the right. Snell, the running back, off to the left of Clark. They'll swing it out here to Snell. He has room at the five, inside the five. I don't know why. At the one, one yard line. line. And boy, they have found something here in the early going on two plays on this right defensive side of Central Dolphin East. They've exploited it twice with passes in the flat. Seems like they've taken advantage of the quarterback. Newbar also plays quarterback, but they haven't played in the corner position, so it seems like they're attacking him after the two fumbles. Maybe he's a little bit shaken. Here's a quarterback sneak by Clark. Touchdown. And he'll go in one yard for the touchdown, and it's just like that, 13 to nothing Harrisburg. So two fumbles, two turnovers on Central Dolphin East and turned into, so far, 13 points for Harrisburg. So Davis, who has kicked off twice, caused a fumble, recovered two fumbles, is now trying to add his second extra point. Been a busy man so far. Oh, yes, he has. A minute 44 into this one, and Harrisburg with a 13-0 lead as Davis will try to convert... And it's oh, it's blocked. blocked. And blocked by number 15 for Central Dolphin East. That is Brandon Hickerson Rooks. But with 9.16 to play in the opening quarter, Harrisburg leads over Central Dolphin East 13 0. This is the Great American Rivalry Series. Sponsored by the U.S. Marines and Toyota. The best selling car in America just got better. Coming soon. The bold new Camry arrives in Cincinnati. Don't miss the 2015 Toyota Camry reveal right here in Fountain Square, October 9th. Don't miss it. Back to Severance Field in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, where the homestanding Harrisburg Cougars lead Central Dolphin East Panthers by a score of 13 to nothing and only two minutes and 44 seconds into it. They've had two turnovers and two touchdowns. Going with an empty set. Really needs to get his confidence level back up. He's fumbled the ball twice. 
They're going with an empty set this series. Up three here to the near side, the short side. Maybauer on a quarterback draw. Up the middle, hit and dropped at about the 40-yard line after a gain of three. That is Andre Young, who's been a busy man on the defensive side of the ball, also for Harrisburg. Both teams will run the spread offense, and a lot of spread offenses like to <laughs> hurry it up a little bit. Yes. But both teams are huddling up here in the early going. And that's that's rare because East usually is a no-huddle type of team. Okay. So I guess they're trying to calm it down and slow the game down a little bit. Two receivers to the left side. The tight end also to that side. They'll bring Smith in motion. That's a fumble. Stab, but boy, that was Whoa. almost a turnover as it hit Nabauer in the face mask. He wasn't expecting it. It looked like he was going to fake it to Smith on the jet sweep and was able to pounce back on it. Just covered him up was Kanai Little for the Cougars. Boy, Nabauer off to a rough start. Yeah, this is, this that, is base, that base was on the center, though, because he uh, is snapping it when he's ready. Right. And Nabauer wasn't ready for the snap. And it was a pretty high snap. Two receivers to either side. The widest here to the near side is Smith. Nabauer has Lamel to his left. Straight back to throw. Now in trouble. Spins away out of trouble. Goes off to the left side and still, still on, on his feet. feet. Looks Whoa. at the receiver wide open, throws it up for grabs, and Good it's broken deep. up by who? That was number eight. Number eight over there. That's Shaquan. Kevin Brown. Shaquan Weeding. Oh, Shaquan Weeding. Yep. Shaquan Weeding. I'm sorry, I got the wrong roster. <laughs> I got two rosters in front of me. Shaquan Weeding. Now, that can cause, uh, cause problems with Nabar moving around back there. Yes. He thought he was going to run, but the lineman did a good job of not going downfield. Great contain. That was a good move by the safeties for stay at home as well. But expect Newbar to start running very soon. He's very elusive. We'll go back to punt formation. Quentin Smith will be kicking to Amichi Walker. Amichi Walker will be yep. deep for Harrisburg, who already lead it by a score of 13 to nothing with 7.33 to play in the opening period. Amichi Walker's a Temple recruit. He committed to Temple Water this year. Smith's punt comes down to Walker at the 28. This is one tackle will be in a flag and probably in the area of maybe a block in the back against Harrisburg who will have the ball already up two scores. Didn't see who the Harrisburg player was over on the far side over there, but two officials. Well, actually look like they just now pointed towards Central Dolphin East. Let's see what they've got here. We're going to get the. Oh, that was on Harrisburg. Must have been a holding. Yep. Yeah, block in the back on the return. So, and also a sideline warning on the Cougar sideline as well. So, lose the ball back when side. Thing. Well, that block in the back actually came at the. 18 yard, 19 yard line, they'll move it five yards back inside the 15 to the 14. So, by far the worst field position for Harrisburg here in the first quarter. Receivers to either side, a wing back to the left. They bring Will in, in motion, cuts it back, and a flag flying here from the near side. And I think we may have. Chop block because they had two guys engaged with the defender here on the near side, and one went high, one went low. All right, and that was out where the official could see it. So, oh, face mask on the defense. Wow, so on CD East, it's Another One mistake 15. after another right now. Yeah, they need to get it together. You know, they've been shell-shocked with a couple of early turnovers on their, by their offense that were turned into points by Harrisburg. And now you give them an automatic first down and get them out of a hole inside their own 15-yard line. Snell, the running back to the left. That was quarterback Clark, who gives it off to Snell right up the middle, who will 
Hounded out across the 35 to about the 37 yard line. Good to make it the 38. Gain of five. It'll be second down at five as we move under seven minutes, or that's actually under eight minutes, I think, now to play yes. in the first quarter. 640. 640. 643. So under seven minutes to play. It's been a <laughs> high score game so far. Quick start for Harrisburg and they move the tight end from the right side of the formation to the left. They give it off to Snell, Snell. running left. Nabauer comes oh, up, makes a nice play tackle. in the open field. And if he doesn't make that play, Snell's got at least 10 more yards. And he drops him right at the 40. So a gain of two will be third and a long three for Harrisburg, who has scored two touchdowns after two turnovers. And it took him three plays. Right. One play on the first one and two plays on the second one. Clark will have Snell off to the left. Two receivers to the right side, the wide side. Now he moves Snell to the right side. And they bring the tight end back over to the left side. In Got to watch that matchup with Michi Walker and Quentin Smith on the back side. Give it off oh. to Snell. And Snell, submarine down at the 41-yard line. Nice tackle by LaMelle. And LaMell went low and up in him. Gain of one to be third, a fourth and two. And for Harrisburg, it looks like they'll be punting from their own 41-yard line. So a nice defensive stand for CDE after being hit with a couple of haymakers early. Oh, yes. You have LaMelle back, Joe LaMelle back for return. He's dangerous back there as well. And LaMelle stands at about his, he keeps backing up at his 20-yard <laughs> line, waiting on the punt from Davis. It'll hit at the 30 and... Takes a CDE bounce back up to the 33-yard line. That's where the Panthers will begin their fourth series of the afternoon, trailing at 13 to nothing with 4.57 to play in the opening period. Boy, just as soon as I said those gray clouds have gone, yes. they have totally <laughs> gone. Now, there's not one gray cloud in the sky. It is a beautiful day for football here in south-central Pennsylvania. Temperature probably in the low 60s. But a beautiful day as Nabauer has LaMelle to his right. Three receivers to the left. They throw that little screen pass out there. That's to LaMelle. And that's LaMelle out there as they Turn actually the had uh, number 24 in the backfield. That's Michael Berkman in the backfield. And they had LaMelle out there in space. And he gets up over the 45 to the 46-yard line for a first down for CDE, who really needs to get a sustained drive to give their defense a little break, even though most of their players on offense will revert <laughs> to defense. Right. But need to, they need to get some points, whether it's a field goal or a touchdown, just to get some semblance of order back on their side of the football. I think they're going to score this drive. This is very rare to keep them scoreless this long. They give it off to LaMelle. There it Big is. Big hole straight up the middle. He's in the secondary, running free and dropped. Michael Berg went on the run. That was Bergwin. Yes. They move LaMelle out About to the receiver right now. Right. They? So they, they do that often too. Yes, they change everything up. And you're right. You told me <laughs> it before we went on the air. They, they all have them at the same field. They yes. look a little bit alike when it comes to the backfield. And so Bergwin rips off a big one inside the Harrisburg 30 and CDE. Now you have a nice drive going. Now you have LaMelle in the slot with Quentin Smith on the right side. Nabauer steps up. There's a pass to Quentin Smith. Wide open the inside. Oh. Off his hands. And it looked like maybe he might have had his hands in the wrong position, That's Coach. It. Yes. Had him too high. <laughs> I expected that matchup. <laughs> Smith, you know, they list him on the, on the roster at six foot one ninety. He looks taller here. He's about six one. He's about I, that, six that, one. He looks taller than six one, even coach. Oh, he's a, he's a heck of a player. He just got clocked up at Penn State at a four four by the head coach. So yeah. it's a legit four four speed. Yeah. I don't doubt the kid can run. <laughs> I expect them to come back to that play again very soon. Now you got the same formation. Three receivers here to the near side. They give it off to Bergwin. Nothing doing. Maybe a yard to about the twenty seven yard line. Over there on the stop for number 45. 45, that's 
Tink Patterson, 5'9", 180, the sophomore. You'll find a lot of sophomores yes. on the defense side of the ball. Oh, yeah. Very young team. For the Cougars. Harrisburg's nice. very young. Tell Steven to give me a shot at the band. Deontay Payne, one of your defensive tackles. Yeah. They list him at 6'190". He's only a freshman. <laughs> <laughs> now East goes to the spread again. Expect new buyer to run. Motion. They've got a wide open. LaMail. And Touchdown, LaMail. Nice catch and a great throw from Nightbauer. And a beautiful throw and then an even better catch from LaMail. Wow. Guess that's where he brings you out of the backfield. He yes. can run the football. He's also <laughs> dangerous as his receiver as well. Staff athletes all over this field. Got to count for everybody. So CDE with 336 cuts the lead to 13-6 to with the extra point pending. And it looks like to me that's number 41, Nick Cervanos, five foot five, 115 pounds, and a sophomore. This is good. Pretty good leg there, and it's straight to, down the middle. So with 3:36 to play in the opening period of play from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, it's the homestanding Cougars on top of the Panthers, 13 to seven. This is the Great American Rivalry Series, sponsored by the U.S. Marine Corps and Safeco. You have to be crazy to go outside in this heat, like Harry. I saw him leaving this morning with that new water thing of his. It's like a snowmobile that floats. Doesn't he worry about being swept out to sea? Or sharks? You're gonna eat that thing all over yourself. Some people want more out of life, and we insure the things that make more possible. Safeco Insurance. Find a local agent at safeco.com. You never take the ball away from your guys' hands. I would never do it again. <laughs> this one, a low line drive that Michi Walker is knocked down by Walker at the 14. Angles off to the left side, has an alley. Cuts it up, gets it over the 30, and is going to be run out of bounds. First by number six, Gary Irvin, and then finished off by number 44, Quentin Detweiler. At the 38-yard line, so Harrisburg with football in the lead. Here in what has been a very entertaining first quarter of action. <laughs> and we were talking off the air, Coach, when you you, know, you thought this might lend itself to be a defensive struggle. It still yes, may. It might be. But, but we've had 20 points scored in the first That's That's a, a lot. Minutes. That's a lot. I mean, it's a lot of athletes on this field on both sides of the ball, and a lot of the kids are related to know each other. Pistol formation this time. They give it off to Little. And he gets up to the 39 after a gain of one. Dropped by... Darren Livingston. Darren Livingston along with... Looked like Nabauer was in there as well. So a gain of one. Second and nine for Little. That was a good tackle. <laughs> now, for our, some of our viewers out there, Coach, what's the difference between shotgun and pistol? Well, pistol is a little bit shorter. Um, shotgun, you usually sit around seven, but a pistol, you're around about three to four yards deep. And you usually have the running back right, right, right beside you. Yes. Yep. Pistol is behind you. Yes, sir. They move little from the left to the right of Clark. Two receivers to the right side. Clark steps up, throws. Meet you, Walker. Man on the slant. That's Walker. Oh, no, no. He actually had them both open. He could have taken his choice. Of either hit Amici Walker. I'm sorry, that was Yusuf Lewis. I'm Yusuf sorry about Lewis. that. He could've, well, he could have hit. I thought he was actually yeah. throwing to Walker. Walker, too. too. He Walker was wide open. <laughs> was running a, a, a quicker, uh, a quicker, uh, quicker, uh, a quicker slant. He was running right. like a two yard slant, whereas the deeper slant came from Lewis on the outside. So another first down for Harrisburg as they are moving the football against this. CDE defense. 
Receiver in motion. They give it off to Little. Angles off. Darts in the hole. Now gets over the 40. Wow. And Strong runs run. off 13 yards. Maybe eh, a little less than that. Maybe 11. Down to the 34-yard line. But Little goes six foot 190. But he's one of those guys that maybe the coach maybe embellished the, the, the size a little bit. Right. You know, maybe 10, 15 pounds. That's a difference when you run between the tackles. Oh, yes, it is. And he's usually a wide receiver. So I guess both teams is doing the same thing, moving their players around and put them in certain positions. Well, get your playmakers the football yes. any way you can. And if you have to move Little to the backfield to do so, <laughs> have to do, do what works. Little off to the left of Clark. Two receivers here to the near side. One back to the right. Clark back to throw. Short drop. Has a man over the middle. Oh. Front. He had... Crummy open over across the middle. I'm sorry, you said Lewis over the middle. I'm sorry. I'm sitting looking at the CD East. And boy, I, I'm telling you, they still got the same colors. Yes. That's, and, yeah. you know, I remember, one's got a silver helmet, one has a black helmet. But it, Lewis was wide open. There wasn't anybody around him, and he just dropped the football. He could have turned and probably run for days there. Little off to the right of Clark. They give it to him running off the left side. Oh, good Stood tackle. up, and I believe that was number 74. That was number five with the tackle. Elam came up from the safety Elam. position. Yep. And it looked like 49 2 for that's A.J. Perez, 6'2", 275. Stood him up. It's a big boy. That big boy, yeah. He's <laughs> pretty quick on his feet. Didn't grow that big when I was that young. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> Clark off to the right, or has little off to the right of him. Two receivers to the right. Steps up, now going to run. Quarterback Inside keeper. the 30, he's got the first down. And drug down from behind as a flag comes in at the 18-yard line from the umpire. And they may get him for a horse collar, I think. Maybe. Close up with a flag. Close up with a flag. Close up with a flag. Look like a nope holding holding behind the play, so it'll be a ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul, which looks to be about the seventeen yard line. Brings it back to the twenty seven. That'll be short of the first down after Clark took off and ran with it, coach, and had the first down, but he's going to be about two yards shy now after the penalty is assessed. It'll be third down and two with a minute two to play in the first quarter. Harrisburg leads it 13 to seven. So we'll wind the clock and Harrisburg looking at a third down. Hey, we'll maybe call it a long two, maybe closer to three as he needs to get down to about the 24 yard line. Clark sends Walker to the right. Joining him out there will be Martise Jones. The tight end, Lewis to the right. And back to his, the near side is Whedon. A run a little Where speed option. Ooh, good block by 25. Good tackle. 25, that's Lamell on the stop for CDE. And it'll be about a half yard short of the first down is Clark. And it'll be fourth, fourth and, and one. short. Ugh. And... Maybe Harrisburg will take and wait till the end of the quarter for the opportunity to make the decision. Well, should we go for it? I think you go for it. Might, you're in no man's land at high <laughs> right. school level here right. at, at the 25. It's too far for a field goal and too short for a punt. Might as well go for if it. If you don't get it, they've still got a, a fairly long field to go. We're through 12 minutes of action here in Harrisburg. The homestanding Harrisburg Cougars lead Central Dolphin East. By a score of 13 to 7, this is the Great American Rivalry Series, sponsored by the U.S. Marine Corps and AT&T.
Severance Field in South Central Pennsylvania, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, about an hour west of Hershey, Pennsylvania, about two or three hours. Oh, no, we're about five north. minutes away from Harrisburg. Five minutes? Yep, five minutes from Hershey Park. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, we're close. Well, see, about <laughs> an hour, see, that's what somebody told me. Oh, no, it's about five minutes. I would be nope. more apt to look at it on the map myself right. instead of listening to somebody. No, we're about an hour and a half, to maybe hour and 45 minutes from Philadelphia. Yeah, we're, we're nice close. Sneak by Clark <laughs> for the first down inside. Looks like they're going to play right on the 20 yard line. We have a flag right in the middle of that scrum as the face man is coming on CDE. It'll be a yardage added on via the penalty. The five yard variety, so they move to the 15, first and 10. I will look for Michi Walker in here. Anything side, him and Mike Keller are pretty good at together. So I will look for Michi Walker. Well, they have Snell directly behind Walker, who's in the pistol formation. Two receivers to the right side, wing back also to that side. They turn, give it off to Snell. Cuts it back inside, and it's bent in the hole and straightened up. And that's number four, Darian Livingston, along with number 40, Wendell Banks. I tell you, Snell's no small thing. He goes 5'10", 200. And he made a nice cut and read, but straightened up in the hole by the two linebackers. Give him a gain of two, second and eight. Two receivers to the right, two back to the left. Little now, the running back to the left of Clark. CD looks like they're Going to blitz. They do come. Clark. Oh, great a sack. Nice 52. play. That is Moore. Makai Moore, the 6'2", 220-pound sophomore, who you told me yeah. off the air was probably better on the defensive side well, of the ball sure. than he was on the <laughs> offensive side yes. of the ball. He made a nice play. Not only made the sack, but he shows his strength bull rush. He just right. moved the lineman back into the backfield with him. Very quick first step. Very, very fast. And only a sophomore. Yeah. That's scary. <laughs> Just think about how much more he can improve in two and a half years. Yeah, both teams are very young. Both teams are young. So a loss of about 10 on the play. It'll be third and about 16 yards to go for the first down for Harrisburg, who can get it at the CDE 6. They swing it out on the screen, and that's Walker. He's dropped in a flag coming from the back judge. And that's usually in the area of holding. There's a lot of cheerleaders at their alumni game. <laughs> Got a whole lot of people here at homecoming yes. for Harrisburg today. And it's a personal foul face mask on CDE. And, you know, when backs run as hard as both backs on both sides of the ball for both teams, you just, you're trying to grab anything you can. Right. And sometimes that happens. Right. Nothing malicious about it. It's another five-yard penalty. Actually, it looks like to be uh, half the distance, so it's a personal foul penalty. Wow. And it is third down and five, so it must have been uh, one that came after the play that wasn't malicious or something, maybe a hands to the face. It had to be. Yep. Third and five. Clark. The snail to his right. Throws the fade route and just a little just bit overthrown to Little. Little looked like maybe kind of slow out of his break. Right. <laughs> you know, it's supposed to be like, like some kind of a fade route, but Little maybe broke it off a little early and was unable to readjust his speed. So I guess Hashford goes for the field goal. Yeah, it looks like they're going to do it. They send out Joel Davis, who's been a busy man. <laughs> Couple of kickoffs, a couple of extra points, a couple of fumble recoveries, and a forced fumble. So now he's going to attempt a field goal here. He'll spot it at the 18 yard line. It'll be a 28 yard attempt. Off the left, just inside the left hash. Oh, high, high snap. snap. Davis has it. They'll throw back to, I believe that's Walker on the left side. The pass is incomplete. And CD is held. I'm not so sure that wasn't yeah, playing to be I, high. That, that, that was kinda, That yeah. was real high. Davis looked like he was expecting it. <laughs> so no points for Harrisburg. 
And with 9.32 to play in the opening half, CDE has the football at their own 11 yard line. So, uh, boy, the sun's just popped out all of a sudden. <laughs> Weather keep changing. I know. I tell you, I love this kind of, this is what you call absolute perfect football weather. Though. Yes. Two receivers to the near, actually three. To the left of the formation, one back to the right. It's like Berwig, behind, right to the left of. Oh, great stop Nabauer defense. Down. Nabauer probably should have pulled it on the zone read, but Berwig dropped for a loss inside the 10. Look like is that Sawyer Brothers that got in there? Oh yeah, yep. <laughs> both of them. <laughs> twins. They Just share everything, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> share the tackle. <laughs> share the tackle. <laughs> share the credit. So a loss of two on the play. It'll be second down and twelve. And if you're CDE, you don't want to make a mistake here. Uh, they have to get some positive yards. Same formation. Nabauer, quarterback draw. <laughs> Right up the middle, looking for a block. Gets it up over the 15 to the 16 yard line. It'll bring up third and about five. As Nabauer, that wasn't really a, a, a true quarterback draw. He just kind of took it, straightened up like he was going to throw something quick, and then pulled it down and ran. So it'll be third down and five for. The Panthers of uh, Central Dolphin East, about 5.1 miles, I think, to be exact. Except <laughs> That's about right. right. Yep. Dave Bauer throws. Has First a man down. on the far sideline. That is Pollard. Tyshawn Pollard. Tyshawn Pollard, 5'11", 180, and a sophomore. But he went down immediately after the catch. There was great awareness knowing where the sticks was to move the sticks. How hard is that to teach? Number one, not only receivers in general, but a, especially a young receiver. It's hard because in high school you don't you don't have as much time to practice with the kids, and a lot of these kids go both ways, so you're limited with time and reps. So that's you know, great football awareness right well, you there. You see guys playing playing for money on Sundays right. and don't get past the sticks <laughs> like that. You're right. <laughs> Dave Bauer takes the snap straight up the middle. He goes. He'll get four, maybe five yards. He gets out over the 25 yard line. And as expected, you get a little pleasant trees after the play. <laughs> and you expect it, though. I mean, you know, we, we were talking about off the air Central Dolphin High School, which is also a uh, member of this, this district and this, this region and right. classification. And, and Central Dolphin East and Harrisburg, probably three of the bigger rivals yes. in this area, particular right. area of Harrisburg. Yeah, there's a lot of teams, there's at least eight teams that's real close by. You have Susquehanna you Township. Miles yes. Each other, yeah, you, you have Susquehanna Township where I coach at, and you have Bishop McDevitt and Stilton. Hey Bauer. Semi roll. Now in trouble. Looks, throws. Good stop. And oh. Pass is broken up. A flag coming from the umpire. Now, there might have been a little contact Good before. Yeah. Can't reach over his uh, back. We talk about playing through the receiver. Look right. Like he played through instead of reaching, coming around on the side. That's another one that comes with experience. It's kind of hard to teach a kid that. <laughs> nice play, though, by the young corner. That is that was Walker, who is a senior. You know, I was noticing the Harrisburg. You're talking about young. They're young in right. the offensive line. Right. Their skill players are all the ones that are Older. seniors. Older, correct. Yeah. So they're going to have to replace a lot of offenses. Nabauer throws over the head of LaMelle. And LaMelle looked like Nabauer expected him to get his head around faster. Pass falls incomplete, second and ten. For our fans, that's the Harrisburg High School marching band. Right? <laughs> yes, they play all they, the they, whole they, game. They don't stop. No. They take maybe a three minute break. If and that. That's it. Yes, just to get some water and they keep going the whole game. <laughs> you know, the ones that tire me out is the, is the, is the flag corps of the dance girls up here. They're, they're tired me out. <laughs> They have not stopped. No. <laughs> since, since about 12 minutes to go in the pregame. Young energy. <laughs> yeah. Young energy. LaMelle with the ball. Three pass out to LaMelle. Judders, uh, stutter steps left. Somebody in his wake there. 
his grasp of air. Gets it up over the 45 to the 47. He's going to be about four yards shy of a Panther first down on the stop. But Andre Young. Andre Young. Another Andre, yep. Young Middle linebacker. He's, He's playing, yep. He's another young player for Harrisburg. 5'10", 180, a junior. Called his name quite a bit here in the first half of action. Receivers to both sides. Neibauer throws. He got his man available again, and I believe that's the young receiver out there. Pollard. Pollard. Again. Same result. Yes. <laughs> Same type of play. I think they found their matchup. Here's what I, what I want our viewers out there to, to understand, Coach, too, is Nabauer's actually throwing that ball before Pollard sticks that foot yes. in the ground and turns around. So right. Pollard's got to locate the ball, like, right now. Right. That's, That's tough to teach, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, especially when he's only in 10th grade. Twin receivers to both sides. Empty. Keelan's the widest here on the near side. Empty backfield again. Usually uh, a couple times they've done this, it's been a quarterback draw. Nabauer. Fakes, Going for the look. Interception. Walker throws, man, that's Walker who intercepted. That's not Walker. That's uh, number eight. Number, number eight. eight. That's uh, Shaquan Wheaton. Shaquan Wheaton with his interception, the senior. And that was just a, a, a pattern where Nabauer just overthrew. Right. It looked like the receiver was running a, a slant, Evan Pierce. Why was he was wide open? there on the screen it's just a little bit late Caddy yeah he had it wide open he just threw it too deep it looked like, throw it behind him like Pierce was running a shallow post yes. whereas uh, Maybauer expecting to run the deeper post <laughs> pattern so oh, that hurts especially when you're moving the football came out of the shadow of your own goal post Clark hit spins out spins of that. out it's gonna be dropped at the 21 from number 58 Alondo Holmes. Alondo Holmes, who's the senior captain. From that defensive end spot. And you said he has a very quick first day. Well, he does. So you got Holmes <laughs> and Moore both playing on that left side of the defensive end and defensive tackles, respectively. Right. And then you have your Brandon Hickerson Rooks, which is one of the best players they have. He led the team last year in sacks, and he's doing the same thing this year. He's pretty good. So a loss it's another team. sophomore. <laughs> They're a young team. Wow. Young loss and fast. Three. And Nabauer has some blood on the left upper arm, so he's going to have to go to the sideline and be replaced. Well, actually, they're going to hold up time here. So Bobby He's got to leave. Yeah, he has to leave. Now, in high school, they do have another, that rule, too. It's in the college game. If the helmet comes off, yep, you have to leave the play. Leave for a play. Yes. Unless you call a timeout. He can come back yeah, after a timeout. Are with those oh, timeouts. Yeah, yes. <laughs> You only get three and a half, you better save them. <laughs> three and a half, I can understand maybe saving the three in the second half. Right. The first half is kind of, you yeah. can't take them in there with you. You're right. You use them, right? 4.52 clock running. Second down, 13 for Harrisburg from their own 21-yard line. Clark with little to his right. Two receivers wide left. One back here to the near side. Clark steps up, lets it fly down the near side. Walker had it in a nice defensive play by Evan Pierce, the senior defensive back for the Panthers, who just came in for Newbar and they took a chance at him. Nice, nice throw from Clark. <laughs> Pretty good pattern from Walker, but an even better defensive play from Pierce. So, pretty good. Uh, Execution on both sides of the ball. Right. So they keep him in, bring Newbauer back in the game, just switch positions with Lamel. So See, multi talented players. They play a little bit of everything linebacker, D line, and safety corner. Got four, line, uh, four down linemen this time for CDE. Middle screen. screen. And a nice play. Wow. Great stop. I believe that was, was that Pierce? That's Pollard. That's Pollard. Number one, yeah. Pollard. Great read. Yep, great read. And job of reading. If he doesn't make that play, they had the offensive lineman out in front. Pollard was the only guy in a white jersey <laughs> yes. right there. So a nice play by Pollard to this, for no game. This is a defensive game I expected more. <laughs> All of a sudden, the defense showed up, haven't they? Right. I think they heard you, Coach. Hey. Well, you figured the first two plays was fumbles. That was defense as well. Right. So it is a defensive battle today. So we're under four minutes to play. 13-7 Harrisburg. All the points came in the first quarter and came early. 
This one off the side of his foot. It'll hit and bounce out of bounds inside Harrisburg territory. Will CDE get the football? Actually, they're going to put it right on the midfield stripe. Figures, I'd say inside. Yeah. <laughs> the guy the stripes does it the other way. So right on midfield will CDE as get the football trailing 13 to 7, 342 before halftime. We're watching all the all the action here online, live streaming, courtesy of the U.S. Marine Corps. Got a lot of respect for guys and gals in yes, the military. Sir. Yes, sir. And the Marine Corps stepping up and had a chance to talk with Sergeant Weber, one of the representatives here of the Marine Corps. They give it off to Lamel, and he's swallowed up in the backfield after a By the Sawyers. Didn't get, yeah, they didn't get back to the line <laughs> of scrimmage. The Sawyers again sharing in on the tackle together. Along with Andre Young. And Young again. I tell you, Young is really active in that middle. But the Sawyers, now you got to get them out of there. One's 5'10", right. 240. One's 5'10", 310. They also have Ritter in there. <laughs> yep. Number 6 to 1. He's in there, actually, with and the one he's Sawyer. He's 6 foot 270, so uh, that's a lot of beef to move oh, out yeah. of there. Yeah. yeah, that's not the biggest offensive line out there that, for Central Dolphin East, right? Shotgun formation for Nabauer. Throws Whoa. over the head of Pierce and should have been picked off. Looked like that was Davis that got a hand in there, and then he deflected it over the head of Walker. And Walker upset because he had visions of taking that one back to the house. <laughs> he has the capability. He just set a record last week for the most return touchdowns in school history. Changes special. the way teams approach you on special, special teams. Yeah, special teams is one-third of the game. Yep. You know, it's just as important as offense and defense for sure. And we're going to get a timeout for Central Dolphin East. 258 left. on the field. 258. 13-7 Harrisburg. Back with more of the Great American Rivalry Series. Sponsored by the U.S. Marines and Toyota. Your Marine Corps way of life is to defend the American way of life. Every day, we take a stand for our nation, for each other, for us all. The few, the proud, the Marines. Back to Harrisburg High School on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. Darren Douglas along with Warren Ritter and our engineer, William Warfield, as we bring you this rivalry between two schools not far apart here. Oh, in trouble. Get out of away. there. Has room to run here on the near side. Directs traffic. Back into the yeah. and I don't know why he wanted to cut it back in the middle. Should have kept had, going straight. Yeah, had LaMail right in front of him. He stays there. He's going to be... Great tackle. Inside the 40, he's going to get the yes. first down, but he, he could have probably scored. Easy. Great tackle by Damian Barber, number 21. Uh, he just should have kept running. Contributed <laughs> by Nabauer. He was right. looking to cut it back and yep. hit LaMail out in front of him. And LaMail was looking for somebody in a black jersey to hit, and there was nobody there. Oh, that was a great escape. Because it should have been the sack. Yeah, me either. I had no idea how he got out of there. Sean Brown should have had the sack. I'll show my age. Harry Houdini, <laughs> he was. I know who he David is. So. Blaine, David Blaine, the young folks were right. There, right? <laughs> Three receivers to the right side. Running back, Lamel to the left Just a little bit. of Nabauer. Nabauer Ooh. throws, and it's broken up. That is Walker. That was a great stop. Looking for Elam, and a nice job of getting the right hand in there by Walker. Second and ten. Second and ten. Two timeouts remaining for CDE with 2.19 to play. Yeah. Yeah, I had to hold him out with you. Yeah, you know, it could be a real big momentum booster for CDE to go in with the halftime lead if they can punch it in here. Still have two timeouts. 210 or 219 is a long time. Oh, it is. Timeouts. It is. Two receivers to the either side. Running back is Berwick to the right of Nabauer. Nabauer looks, throws. Ooh, and just short again. He's being little, rushed. Yeah, yeah. Do a little bit quicker than he wanted to, just out of the reach of Lamel. Third and ten. Seems like both teams are playing man-to-man -man defense. Oh, there's a, a flag. flag. It's probably going to be unsportsmanlike on Harrisburg. Wow. Harrisburg, and I believe they're going to get the defender who is coming off the field, and that is Damian Barber. I believe it's who they got for the 
unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. It's 15 yards. And that gives an automatic first down, but also moves it 15 yards closer for CDE, who has seemed to ride at the ship a little bit yeah. after being hit with two turnovers that turned into points, all the points for Harrisburg here in the first half of action. Haven't seen Quentin Smith in a game in a while. Uh, he up. He's, I don't see him on the field at all right now. Nabauer gives it off oh. to... 51, uh, one of the Sawyer twins. <laughs> uh, that's one of the Sawyer twins, you're right. That's Jamil. That's Jamil, 5'10", 310 pounds. That was Berwick on the carry. He loses a yard, so it'll be second down at 11 with 155 clock running here in the first half of action. Harrisburg leads... 13 to 7. You're watching all the action of the Great American Rivalry Series. Okay, Quinn Smith's out there now. Out Far away. The yes, sir. Him and LaMelo on the hey, same side. Wow, maybe he had an issue with something we're not aware of. Nybauer throws here to the near side. This is a nice move. Whoa! Breaks the, Breaks tackle. the tackles. Goes inside to five. Touchdown. He that is Evan Pierce, the senior. And it was a missed tackle, which usually causes problems on those quick screens like that. If you get man-to-man -man coverage, you miss a tackle, usually it's to either big play or score. And Pierce takes it in, and with a minute 25 to play before halftime, CDE, pinning the conversion, has a chance to take the lead. Up. Wow. Came down to discipline. Watch the missed tackle. They're right there at the 18-yard line. Didn't see who the – was that Walker that missed the tackle there? Couldn't tell. I couldn't tell either. Happens fast there. That was a great run. So we're going to get the extra point try by Nico Cervantes. 14 to 13. Through, and with minute 25 to play, CDE has scored 14 unanswered points to lead it. 14-13. Back with the kickoff uh, on the Great American Rivalry Series, sponsored by the U.S. Marine Corps and Safeco. Ooh, you have to be crazy to go outside in this heat, like Harry. I saw him leaving this morning with that new water thing of his. It's like a snowmobile that floats. Doesn't he worry about being swept out to sea? Or sharks? You're gonna eat that thing all over yourself. Some people want more out of life, and we ensure the things that make more possible. Safeco Insurance. Find a local agent at safeco.com. Your Marine Corps way of life is to defend the American way of life. Every day, we take a stand for our nation, for each other, for us all. The few, the proud, the Marines. by the up man that is I believe that's Davis again isn't <laughs> Davis is all over that, the field today Davis, isn't he Joel Davis all over the place <laughs> but that is he's kicking he's returning <laughs> yeah that was number I believe that was 81 kicking off for that's Jaquan Pitts by my roster but I'm not sure they said it was Nico Zerbanos kicking off but it wasn't him he's not right. Five foot two and no, that, <laughs> no. Kind of, that, that kicker was bigger for CDE. <laughs> Good field position for the Cougars as they start this drive with a minute 20. They find themselves behind now 14 13 after leading 13 to nothing. Barely Man, it, a minute and a half into this one. Oh, wasn't ready. Yeah, Clark was not ready. He ball bass right back up to him. He's in oh, the hit 52. Him. That is the Kai Moore. And that one. Directly related to a snap that came when he wasn't even ready. He was really no, not looking at it. And a loss of about See, that's that, that's that no huddle stuff. Sometimes you got to regroup and just slow it down. Second and 22. And Harrisburg right now is trying to stop here. As you watch the snap here, watch. He's not even ready for it. And then he rolls off to the left, coach, and just then just decides to stop, and there's more. It's a big loss. Almost a 
how many times in your career have you seen that oblong ball take a true bounce come oh, straight back up? That hurts. <laughs> I, never, I haven't seen as much as I've seen it this year. It took a Uh-oh. Bounce. Here's a big There's run a hole. for Little. Hindu CDE territory knocked down at the 45. Wow. 32-yard gain. And about a 21-yard gain. He's going to be a yard short, it looks like, at the 45. He needed to get to the 40. Four yard line, so it'll be 18 seconds left in the quarter. And timeout Harrisburg. We're going to go replay. Watch, yep, here's yeah, the watch replay. this on the left side there, Coach. This is a huge hole. It's good blocking downfield by the receivers. Now, watch over here on the back side, though. You see right there about the 40 pick. Got to be careful. If right. You're Harrisburg, you've got a chance now to put some points on the board right. with two timeouts left. Can't afford a personal foul penalty. Got it? When you hear the whistle, you got to stop. Keep saying Marines. We're at a timeout, Harrisburg. They called it so each team with two timeouts. You're watching the Great American Rivalry Series. Sponsored by the U.S. Marine Corps. We have a couple of representatives down here. Actually, I think three or four representatives down here to the right of us as we sit here at the press box. Now, we, you were telling me this, the home side used to sit as we look at the field yes. on the far side behind the school, now yes. they've flip-flopped it. Yes, sir. Kind of yep. makes sense, though. You know that? You usually put the home side with the sun to your back when it's getting ready to set. You're right. That but would it, make sense, right? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they redone the whole facilities. Yeah, beautiful. You know? now, I assume this was a turf field? Yes. A grass field grass before? Field before, yes. They built now, a field house, indoor football field inside the field house. and Clark, pump fakes, looking long. He's going to overshoot his man. He needs to put a little more air under that. It looks like it was, is that? Shaquan Butts Anderson, true freshman. True freshman, wow. Yes, sir, true freshman. He's got a pretty good size, too. Six foot 170. Shows some inexperience running the pattern, but also yes. Clark's got to lead him a little bit more. Yes. Put a little air under the ball. Would you agree? I agree, I agree. That way, of course, the coach would call it <laughs> dropping it in the bucket. Just drop it in the bucket. Let him run up under it. All the cliches you have for football coaches. <laughs> you tell them a former coach, Clark, hits a man out in the flat. That is Jones, and Jones will dance inside the 40. He'll pick five up the seconds. first down with five seconds to play. And now Harrisburg has themselves in a position to just throw one up in the end zone and hopefully maybe catch lightning in the bottle, take the lead back at halftime here. 14-13, CDE, who is – Shell shocked early again. The Great American Rivalry Series. You're watching it live via the internet, courtesy of the U.S. Marine Corps. The best-selling car in America just got better. Coming soon, the bold new Camry arrives in Cincinnati. Don't miss the 2015 Toyota Camry reveal right here in Fountain Square, October 9th. Don't miss it. Back here at Severance Field, as we heard in, early on, legendary and historical yes. Severance Field. Now you've, <laughs> had, you've been around here. You'll have to tell, share with us a little bit later okay. the history of this. Today we expect these two teams to fight head to head. Big rivalry game. Gives now to Hughes. Hughes and he is going to get in. Touchdown. One of the top 25 high school rivalry games in the country. It's just, it's awesome. The fans just go crazy. Being broadcast across the globe to the Marines and our military personnel worldwide. Look for a block. He's free. Touchdown. The thing about rivalries is, it doesn't matter what kind of season you're having. You win this game, it's a big season, it's a big win. Welcome to the 2014 Great American Rivalry Series, presented by the United States Marines on the iHigh Sports Network. Brookwood versus Parkview. It's a rivalry that traces its beginnings back to the opening of Brookwood in 1982. The team shared a stadium until 1989, constantly arguing over whose logo should go on the 50-yard line. The game has been coined the Battle of Five Forks Trickum. 
a reference to the road that connects the two districts. The rivalry really heated up in 2002 when Parkview beat Brookwood in the state 5A championship. This year marks the 33rd meeting in a series where the Brookwood Broncos hold a 19-13 advantage over the Parkview Panthers. Former Brookwood players include Jason Elam, a retired NFL kicker, and Stefan Heyer, an NFL lineman, as well as Parkview standouts Michael Palmer and Ainsley Battles. You can check out the live game broadcast online at greatamericanrivalry.com on Friday, September 12th at 7.30. And be sure to join the Rivalry Series Twitter stream at American Rivalry. Now, I think wrapping up. Almost. Yeah, we're close. But we're about a minute 55 away. And actually, both teams will get, I guess, an extra three minutes after that to warm up. It'll restretch, yes. So, uh... And it was an entertaining first half there in Douglas along with Warren Ritter. As, uh, we saw Harrisburg get off to a fast start. They forced two fumbles on the first two possessions of the ball game for CDE. Uh, both fumbles recovered by Joel Davis, who was a busy, busy young man in the first <laughs> he half. Was. He was. Recovered the two fumbles. He forced one of those fumbles. He also kicked one of two extra points and uh, returned to kicks. Returned to kick off and also. Uh, broke up a couple of passes as well as tried a field goal, but the snap was bad through a pass that was right. incomplete. So he had a full day in the first half. Right. But uh, a very entertaining first half. It was. It was. Uh, what do you expect? Uh, you know, we were sitting here talking to some of the people from Harrisburg, and, and the first half, the first 24 minutes, was the microcosm of Harrisburg's season, right. where they've been their own worst enemy. They have. You know, had untimely penalties, untimely lapses in, in, in coverages maybe or in defensive uh, play and, and turned the ball over on the offensive side of things. Uh, just what? I, bl I, blame, I blame it for being young, you know, lack of maturity. You know, it, it's game time experience, I guess it is. You know, they lost a lot of seniors last year. Hashford, I think they lost like 22 or 23 seniors. So a lot of these guys didn't really get a chance to get a lot of varsity time. And now you – we throw them into a rivalry game like this, it's, it's an eye-opener. You know, a lot of things happen we between them lines. Well, you got to give your hat, uh, tip your hat to, to CDE because they were shell-shocked yes. in the first minute and yes, a half of this one, trailing 13 to nothing. Uh, I think they got a little momentum uh, after the second touchdown when they blocked the extra points. So, uh, but you have to tip their hat. They didn't panic. Right. They didn't. Uh, curl up and, and let Harrisburg really just do whatever they wanted the first half. They threw some punches back uh, at, at, C, uh, at Harrisburg and able to take the lead there inside the final two minutes uh, of the first half. Well, well, East has a great head coach, Mr. Aaron Blanding. And the He's team, a young guy, too. Yes, he is. The team believes in him and, and a reflection of him. You know, without panicking, he never panics, remains calm, and his guys didn't panic. You know, being down 13 enough, nothing, most teams will start panicking. Especially the way it happened, too. <laughs> right. You know, most teams will panic, but they remain poised, and now they walked into the half by winning by one. Well, they'll kick off Will CD East as I look down at his number four, Darian Livingston, to kick off for the Panthers, who lead it 14-13 here as we get ready to begin the third quarter of action. And who would have thunk it? for lack of a better term there. And he puts a toe to it. Comes down at the 30-yard line to the up man. I believe that's Davis again. <laughs> Returns it up to the 36-yard line. On the stop for CDE was Brandon Hickerson Rooks along oh, with Michael Merkel. <laughs> so CDE East will go on the defense as Kel Clark will bring his offensive unit out for Harrisburg, looking to get some offensive rhythm back oh, yeah. in the they, second half. Now they put a Michi Walker in the backfield. Looks like they're going to go <laughs> Wildcat or Wild Cougar. Oh, yeah, Wild Cougar. Cougar. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> now, I think anything that's got claws and teeth are dangerous. Right. Cougars, Panthers, Pumas, it doesn't matter. It's the first time I've ever seen this. They'll give it off to Little on the jet sweep, cuts it back into the middle. And we'll get up over the 40 to about the 41 yard line. A gain of four, second and six. Stop by. That's. 
Ty Moore again, the sophomore defensive tackle for CDE. Very active in the first half was Moore on the yes. defensive side of the ball. And you said he was a better defensive player than offensive player. Much better. Until he likes to hit. <laughs> Second and six for Harrisburg. Give it up. Don't nope, fake it to Little. Walker on the keeper. Meets you, Walker. Gets it up to the 38, maybe the 30, or 43 or 44 yard line. I'm sorry. Give him a couple more to be third and a long three for Harrisburg on the initial possession of the second half. You're watching the Raider Maker Rivalry Series sponsored by United States Marine Corps and Toyota. Just a few of the fine sponsors. Safeco along with AT&T as well. They actually put their quarterback out of receiver. Yep, this is little in motion. They give it to him again on the jet sweep. He has blockers out in front. Flag on the play on the far side. Little's going to get up near the sticks, but I think they're going to get probably an illegal shift. I think I saw another Cougar move at the same time as Little's in motion. Signal from the official. Been a fairly well played football game. The illegal procedure against Harrisburg, so it'll back them up five yards instead of third and short. Now it's third and long, third and long eight. Just underway here in the second half. Central Dolphin East leads it 14 13. Receivers to the right side, one back to the left. Tight end to the right side for Harrisburg. Snell, the running back to the left of Clark. Clark steps up in the pocket, throws. Has a man at midfield. First Inside down. Inside CDE territory at the 49-yard line, and that is number 11, Yusef Lewis. Yes. 5'9", 182-pound. Tight end. <laughs> Big cat. <laughs> These are the tight ends you find, you know, find 6'2, 6'3, 6'4 yes. of the range. Maybe 220 and above. Right. But 182 pound tight end. That's a small one. That's small one. <laughs> Same formation. They give it off to Snell right up, up the, middle. the middle. Big hole. Breaks a tackle inside the 35, down to the 32 yard line. He reels off tackle. 16. Tackle by Lamel. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Lamel. Reach for the back of the shoulder pads of Snell. Well, I'll tell you what, up the middle for Harrisburg, they just uh, the Sawyer Twins and Ritter open up a huge hole. They give it off to Snell again. He just burrows his way inside the 30 yard line to the 28. Gain of four, second and six. Now hurry up from Harrisburg, no huddle. Give it off to Snell. He slips and falls at the 32. So give a gain of one. Third and five for the Cougars as they have the initial drive of the second half. They turn as Clark lobs it down the middle. Whoa, Intercepted Quentin nice Smith. defensive play by Smith. As Clark underthrew it just a little bit as he tried to hit the tight end, Lewis, who is running a seam pattern right down the hash marks. And it's the defensive game I kind of expected. <laughs> Quinn Smith has not been hurt from on the offensive no, side of the ball. I don't know. The best receiver for the Panthers, but he comes up with a big turnover and take away the first of the day for Harrisburg. Hyde Nabauer. We go back out. The junior quarterback for CDE who has gone all the way at quarterback. We thought yes. we might see Justice Jacobs a little bit, but we haven't seen him so far. Nabauer swings it out here to number three. three. That's Pierce who gets a block. Flags fly. Fumble on the ball. Place. Fumble. The ball came loose and Harrisburg has it. Oh, he's, he's saying man down. He's saying he was down. But a flag behind the play, usually in the area of holding. Up 
Conversate here on the near side. It's got a little crowded. <laughs> Crowd's big. That was a really nice crowd. First down, Harrisburg. It is a turnover. Wow. And the flag went on CDE, which will be, of course, denied on the holding penalty. The turnover, the third of the day for CDE. All three via the fumble. And usually you have turnovers in, in rivalry games yes. because there's a whole lot of scraping and tugging at the football. A lot of extra activity going on. <laughs> oh, yeah, we had a little, few plays. But, yeah, hey, where are you going to go to dinner after the game tonight? That right. <laughs> These guys really uh, – there really hadn't been have anything out of the way. There hadn't been any dirty, any dirty right. plays or anything like that. Just good, hard, aggressive football. Receivers to the left side, Clark. Throws a screen across the middle. He has Little, who made a nice one, and he catches wow. in a great defensive play. From Neubauer. Uh, Neubauer, yeah, I tell you what, he came out wow. of nowhere. Yes, he Little did. had a lot of room to run. <laughs> and then here comes number seven, the white, like you shot out of a cannon. <laughs> he did. Came from backside of the field. That was a great read on his part. And he stops Little for no gain. Guess that's his QB instincts. I guess. He <laughs> saw that one coming. You look at this. Now watch him come out of your out of your out of the right side of the screen, just out of nowhere. And that's a sure open field tackle. Yes, it is. And that's that little's nothing to you know sneeze at him. Pretty quick. Clark steps back now. Steps to the left. Looks through. Got caught in a situation there, coach, where he just didn't know if he wanted to pull it down and run or stop it. And, and yeah. He's holding throw. the ball too long. Just make your read and make the throw. Yeah, well, what would you tell him in that situation? He, he didn't. He, he was looked like he wanted to throw it, and then he said, "No, nah, no, I'll run." And he just like he was calling in between. What would you What would you tell him if you were? In? Hey, you look at up. your main receiver. You don't see your check down, then go. <laughs> you only get one or two looks. You know. You gotta have that like yes. mental clock in your head, <laughs> for sure, which is usually what three seconds. If that, yep. Especially with a defense like this, it's gotta be fast. Three receivers to the right side, one back to the near side, or the far side. Snell, the running back to the left. So he's got to throw Clark. it. He's got to throw Steps it. Steps up, throws it into the end zone, incomplete. As little. And Four. I believe that is. Is that Crummy? No, he's trying to throw it to Amici Walker. Tyshawn Pollard over there. So fourth, got to walk away with some points down yeah, here. I think you, well, I don't know how good Davis's leg is. They spot the football to 23 here. It'll be a 33-yard field goal, so. You go for it here. If you don't get it, you actually gain plus four on the field position. <laughs> right. Little, will reset as the wing back on the left side. Two receivers here to the right side. Now he whistled a timeout for Harrisburg. Looked like some confusion about what they wanted to call. So timeout on the field with 7.07 to play in the third. It's 14 for CDE, 13 for Harrisburg. This is the Great American Rivalry Series, sponsored by the U.S. Marine Corps and Toyota. You have to be crazy to go outside in this heat, like Harry. I saw him leaving this morning with that new water thing of his. It's like a snowmobile that floats. Doesn't he worry about being swept out to sea? Or sharks? You're gonna eat that thing all over yourself. Some people want more out of life, and we ensure the things that make more possible. Safeco Insurance. Find a local agent at safeco.com. Back to Harrisburg High School in South Central Pennsylvania. A beautiful day for football. A little breezy now as look to the left of the tree line behind the scoreboard. Picks up a little bit. Fourth. Actually, it's first, uh, fourth and ten. Clark rolls, throws to the corner of the end zone to Walker. No flag. Some contact, but no flag. The ball goes sailing incomplete. 
And the ball will go over on downs to CD. Picking again on Pollard over there. Young man, pretty good cornerback. As well as receiver for CD. Yeah. He's only in 10th grade as well, another young guy. Well, well, again, we talked about him in the first half, how they needed, how he was seven for a first down. He went nine. A couple yards past the six, gave himself a little bit of room to come back to the ball if he needed to. Different type of offensive formation for East. This would be, I guess, the inverted bone or the triangle. <laughs> The male with the ball. Get, was that a quick, it looked like a direct snap to LaMelle. He'll get 11 yards nonetheless up to the 27 yard line. It'll be first and 10 for CD. Yeah, there was a, uh, when, uh, when, uh, back in the old days, when Oklahoma, before they went to the wishbone, they used to run in the old wishbone yeah. with the inverted wishbone. That's what that looked like. And that looked like the ball was actually directly snapped to LaMelle, who was the left up back in that formation. Clock running. We're under nine minutes to play in the third quarter. Same scores we had as the break. Same formation. Receivers to either side. Nabauer will turn. Give it off the deep man. That is. Fumble. Ball came loose. And here is a. I don't think they call him down. Boy, I tell you what, that ball looked like it was out. Yeah, that looked like the a ground. fumble. Yeah. But the man on the white hand on top of the play immediately singled. Wow. He was down by contact. So take the defensive touchdown off the board. And what would have been the fourth turnover of the day for CDE. This was close. Yeah, he was yeah. down. He ball, was down. Yeah, the ground cannot cause the ball right. hit directly on the ground, or the arm did. So therefore, the gain of two for Berwick, who's down the back man in that offensive set. Nebauer, throw it towards Smith. Great coverage over there by number three, Rasheen Phillips, 5'10", 170 pounds, senior. Didn't let Smith get anywhere. Smith looks like maybe he might be experiencing a hip issue or something. Ooh, he's holding his right hip as he comes back to the huddle. Now he's kind of jogging a little bit more. He, was, he didn't look like he's running like he was running in the game. Maybe he has a some kind of physical element. Well, it looks like he's got a wrap on that right leg down there, down around the calf, maybe. Which he didn't have in the first half. Something to keep an eye on as this game goes along. Twin receivers to either side. One running back to the right of the quarterback, Nabauer. In trouble, down he goes. Little came on the corner blitz and came untouched. Oh. Nabauer never had a chance. Didn't even see him coming. That middle clock we were talking about a minute ago, yeah. never had a chance to start. <laughs> no. <laughs> Little got there right now. Fourth down and 15 after the sack. This is the type of defensive game I expected earlier. Well, you said it. you expect to be a defensive game. Then we had 20 points scored in the first minute right. and a half. And I looked at you like, okay. <laughs> but it's settled down into that right now. All right. Now, this could be a big return if he kicks it to Miji. This is just one great big game of chicken. Right. <laughs> Who's going to blink first? Right, right. Who's going to blink? Who's going to flinch? Last team with the ball wins. Possibility. Sis punt. It's going to be a heck of a return. He dropped right in front of Walker and filled it at the 45 on the bounce. Comes around to the 50. Dances. He gets it in back into CDE territory and then. Looked up, saw Pollard staring him in the face, said, better powder Valor, I'm going to go down. <laughs> Guy sizes you up like that, you, he's got a good shot at you. You might want to go ahead and hit the ground to see. I'm down the, what? It took a chance the young man did, though, with the ball bouncing like that. Right. Picking it up with white shirts all around. Pulls to get away from it. <laughs> but if he makes a play like that, then you got to it makes something positive about it. It's kind of hard to get on his coach, isn't it? Harrisburg's getting another opportunity inside there. Inside CD territory. This is about the fifth drive of the day that started in there in CD territory. Great tackle by the male. And Snell <coughs> tried to cut it back out to the right side. That play was designed to go to the left. He just lost his footing. Lamel there was to assist him to the ground. 
Gain of four, second and six. About more. Looked like Snell, looked like Clark expected Snell to come through <laughs> to get the handoff, and Snell was in pass block. Then, this is why I like the old fashioned teams that huddle, yeah. you know. They, well, they Clark this what any experienced quarterback does is pulls the ball, tucks it, gets what he can. Breaks the tackle, gets the first down to 30. Tackle by Nabauer. Hey, Nabauer's all over the field, isn't he? All of a sudden, starting <laughs> to make his, his presence felt. Maybe not at the quarterback position, right. but at least on the defensive side of the ball. It's a lot of tackles for a corner yep. on the opposite side of the field. And you know something that, that that's only when CDE has the football, you know, he's been quiet for the last right. three or four right. years for the Mr. Young. Yeah. <laughs> Harrisburg, this somebody's found 34 black starting to block him a little bit. Right. They bring him up, receiver in motion. Clark swings it over here. Oh, nice play by Nate. Newbauer. Boy, I tell you what, he came flying up there and made the hit on uh, Martise Jones. And Jones's helmet comes off, so he has to come over to the side of the for one play. What? That was a great. <laughs> that was a <laughs> split two blockers. Replay. Watch him come up here. He ain't coming between two. Harrisburg blockers. The two lineups to the right side of the bottom of the screen. Watch them as they try to block. And here comes Nightbauer. Look at this. Just a post. Actually, he was just one. Pass is incomplete. Harrisburg. They're going the wrong way right now. <laughs> it's in a fourth and long, and they started in CD territory. The first play from scrimmage was a positive one, and since then they've been backwards. And they're going to go for it. With two minutes, 14 seconds to play in the third. Too much time. <laughs> Clark drops his mouthpiece. Now has Off sides. In, and now we're going to get a whistle. It's from A.J. And Perez. I think, actually, yeah, the encroachment is on CDE before. Let's see. We're going to have a huddle of three of the officials here to see what happened first. I believe the encroachment happened before the, the layup game. Yes. But just barely. <laughs> Hard to see CJ Perez, 6'2 and 275. You can't hide. Junior. <laughs> when you jump off sides, you're 275, and you can't sneak back. And he's actually a good basketball player. And actually, they're going to get the delay of game on CD or on Harrisburg. So, five yard penalty against the Cougars moves it back five more. And they're actually almost at the original line screws where they started this drive. Going the wrong way. Yep, Need a big play. And the proverbial country mile. Right. <laughs> Clark rolls to his left, sets, throws deep down the far sideline. He has a man out there oh. just out of his reach. I believe that was Walker. And saying hello to Mikael Clark was A.J. Perez. <laughs> I guess this. Man. One of those is a quarterback. You know you're going to get hit. Just got to stay in there and let it go. <laughs> and he just overthrew, and I believe that was Walker he overthrew. No, that was not. Yes, that was Walker. Was, was that Walker? Yes, sir. Actually, it looks like Butts. I think it's who it was. It's Juan Butts Anderson. I think it's who he overthrew. Here's a punt. 
Fielding at the three by LaBelle. Dancing around, and we dropped at the five. It's a great punt. Good coverage. I think that I ball said it was a fumble. Again. No. The officials say LaBelle had, still had control of it. Boy, I tell you, a coach is a, is a, is a, is a coach and, and a former player. And I'm right. sure you, at times in your career, maybe return some kicks like that. Right. When you feel the butt like that, as a coach, you see your player back there dancing around like the this. What's going through your mind on the side? It makes you angry. <laughs> <laughs> you mostly teach the kids is make one cut and go. Yeah. Just get upfield. Positive yards is always, you know, once you got your shoulder pass to the goalposts, it's always a positive yard, you know. But these kids are different, you know. They think every play is a home run. For the first time today, straight eye formation in the backfield for CD, and then Knight Bauer draws the entire defensive line off sides. Yes. And that's about the only thing the Sawyer, bro Sawyer brothers have not <laughs> bad on defense. They both jumped. Yes. Uh, we mentioned they do a lot of stuff together. It's about the discipline. I mean, when, you, when you're sitting over there in two, three techniques, you got to understand where the ball is. You, you have to see the ball. Yeah, the thing is, as a defensive tackle, you have the ball usually on your inside yes. shoulder. So there's no reason for you to jump offside. At all. Unless you're anticipating snap kick. Right. And again, you got young players. Yeah. They right. sometimes do that. Right. Even the guys who get paid for money. Do yeah. <laughs> again, eye formation of the backfield. Single receivers to either side. Nabauer turns, gives it off to LaMail. Nothing. Baby falls forward for a yard. Second and two. Actually, we have three on that one. It'll be second down and two after the five yard penalty made it first and five. Same formation with receivers to both sides. Tight end to the right side. Both sides again. It's the young discipline. And that's Sean Brown, the defensive end here on the right side. Looks like he may have he did the cheap first down for CDE. So you have two offside penalties on Harrisburg. That'll and then a run in between those that allows CDE to come outside their own five yard line to pick up a first down. So first and ten for the Panthers of CDE at their own 18 yard line. 15 seconds clock running here in the third quarter. They swing it out to no. Evan Pierce goes right through his hands, incomplete. Yeah, and I agree, Coach. That was close to be. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. If you're Harrisburg, make don't wait for the officials. Let's go get it. Off. Go <laughs> get it. Pick them up and make them make the decision whether it's mm -hmm. a, a lateral or not. With the incomplete pass, the clock stops with nine seconds to go. Again, you're watching the Great American Rivalry Series between Harrisburg and the All Black with the silver helmets and Central Dolphin East. In the black helmets with the white jerseys. Lamel slipped when he got the handoff. He comes free, score, almost squirted out of there. It's going to be dropped at the 20 as the third quarter comes to an end. The score is the same as it was at halftime 14 13 in favor of Central Dolphin East. Back with the remaining 12 minutes of action in regulation. Here on the Great American Rivalry Series, brought to you by the U.S. Marines. And safe come. So sometimes I need to find an easy way to express what's most important to me. Like with my crew, I use shorthand to tell them what I need. And when I need to talk directly to my fans. But the most meaningful shorthand of all is the one I use when I'm about to drive. Hashtag X. It's an easy way to tell everyone that I'm about to drive. And I do it every time before I get behind the wheel. Use hashtag X to pause the conversation before you drive. Because no text is worth a life. Quarter getting ready to start as the team swap ins. Central 
Dolphin East trying to come out of the shadow of their own goal post as this drive started at their own five yard line. They've punched it out courtesy of a couple of penalties on Harrisburg out to their own 20 yard line. It'll be third down and eight. Shotgun from Thaybauer. They throw a little slant and we're gonna get a roughing the passer penalty on Harrisburg. So another first down courtesy of the penalty. And Thaybauer is shaken up. Blow to the head. That's the biggest, that's the biggest thing that I think a lot of defensive linemen you know, you're struggling to try to get pressure on the quarterback in passing situations. And you're going high. Right. And they even at the high school level, they have really put emphasis on blows to the head. Yeah. See this comes to the, the discipline part. See Ritter just checked into the game. Him and Sean Brown to do tackles. Ashburg better be lucky on that play. <laughs> I think they may, we may have a sideline warning of offsides. Somebody lined up in the neutral zone for Harrisburg. So right now, Harrisburg in this drive has three offside penalties right. and a personal foul penalty. So the drive which started at the five has covered 41 yards. Mm -hmm. 30 of them have been via the penalty. It's that discipline. <laughs> it's all about discipline. Two is the mental toughness of a team. A team right now, Harrisburg struggling a little bit offensively. And you see some little bit of frustration. They toss it out here to the running back. That is Lamel. Have to wait. 24 and 25. Their running style looks similar. <laughs> similar. Built the same. They're built the same. <laughs> the numbers are close. Yes. Got to watch. And it's really hard to read Harrisburg's numbers. That black and that gray. Right. <laughs> Especially from here. Right. You know, and I thought I was doing okay, a little bit better with my eyesight, but until <laughs> I saw these numbers, and I'm like, oh, I can't see those from here. Good thing it's a day game. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Three receivers, a short bunch formation to the left side. Nybauer drops, throws, Ping. caught by Baller. And a nice, sure, open field tackle. That is, looks like Sherman Braxton, number two. Out there on the right corner, actually. I'm not sure about that's that number now. three. That's Rashawn Phillips. Rashawn Phillips, okay. Yep. Again, the number two and the number three stick together. Watch this. This again, another sure open field tackle at the top of your screen. Recognizes the play. Step up. These oh, corners, these corners are playing. Both these. Yep. One well, thing wrong with that coach though, he dropped his head a little bit. Yep. Which can create some issues with that. Here's Ty Bauer in trouble. And down he goes at the 30 yard line. Huh? This is on the radio. That's how I got to talk. So. No, who's the announcer? Oh, that's him. Look through the wall. All over there. A sack for Harrisburg. And Harrisburg will force a punt out of Quentin Smith and CD. And I did not see who. I think that's one of the Sawyer's brothers again they got back there. Actually, it's. It was 52, I believe. 52? Yep. I thought it was the big guy here on the end down here. It's that 28th, the big guy. Yeah. Well, I don't see a 28 on the roster. It's Harrisburg, so. It's a fourth and 12. Smith and punt formation. Walker to return it. This one's high and overhead. Walker fills it with the 31. Ribbon back and dropped to the 25. Well, I'll tell you what, you got to give your, uh, put a feather in Kevin Michi Walker. He hadn't heard of a fair catch, but maybe <laughs> might have been better part served. Got to put that hand up. <laughs> Gave up six yards on the catch and getting hit. 
This is becoming a heck of a defensive game now. Penalties and defense. Penalties and defense, and who's going to create a turnover that might lead to a short field or right. directly to a touchdown? I believe that's Michi Walker cramping up. That's Michi Walker, and again, that goes back to the fact that he's not, you know, fearless, but I call for a fair catch. Right. I heard some people down here earlier say he very rarely ever does. He got off to Snell, straightened up at the line of scrimmage and dropped. Perez in number four. Boy, I tell you what, AJ Perez Darren Livingston. all of a sudden here in the second <laughs> half of action has made his presence felt this by left defensive end spot. Gain of a yard for Snell. It'll be second down and nine. As the clock rolls and we're under nine minutes to play in this one. In regulation. I say regulation because this thing's going. We could be heading for overtime, even though right now CDE does lead it by a point, 14-13. They bring a little in motion from right to left. Clark throws out there, dropped. And a receiver open about the 31-yard line, just went right through his hands. They bring up third and 10 now for Harrisburg. They need to fight and get a first down now. now they're, right now, they're their own worst enemy. Yes. Yep. It's a drop passes. Penalties where they lost discipline on the offensive line, jumped off sides, a couple of then a personal foul field in on a late hit. Three receivers here to the near side. Clark throws out here to Little. Tries to make a move and a nice job defensively. By CDE. Eibauer uh, and Pollard in there, but the guy who really made the play was number 40. That is Wendell Banks, who is broken down just like you teach him, break down. <laughs> Let yeah. the offensive man commit for making a move. Don't go at any fake. You have Joe Lamel back for the punt return. This, this could be a problem if he fills it cleanly. Lamel back. Receiving the punt from Davis. Again, some confusion from Harrisburg. They run a guy on late. Davis. Boy, oh, he kicked the point of that ball. Hits at the 40, gets a Harrisburg roll inside the 30, down to the 26, down to the 25. Davis could be limping because he kicked the point of the football. That ball yeah. dropped straight down, nothing but the point. Me, I'd be in traction for a month. <laughs> this game settled into what you call a defensive oh, struggle, Coach Ritter. And, uh, you know, really, what 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 does Harrisburg have to do to get their their momentum back that they had early in the first quarter? They have to slow down, slow down, and just start playing their type of football. I think now they're starting to play East's game instead of playing their own game. You know, they're looking for the home run instead of just relaxing and playing their type of football. It's so a one-point game, and they can still win. Now, what does CD East have to do? Because they, they're not playing high-caliber football either right now. Got to put the ball in the hands of the playmakers, you know. Whistle, and we get a timeout for CD East. Does that play a little dead before the snap of the football? Timeout on the field here with 734 to play in the ball game. It's CD East on top of Harrisburg, 14-13. This is the Great American. Brought to you by the United States Marine Corps and Toyota. The best-selling car in America just got better. Coming soon, the bold new Camry arrives in Cincinnati. Don't miss the 2015 Toyota Camry reveal right here in Fountain Square, October 9th. Don't miss it. Back to Harrisburg High School, it is first and 10 for CDE's trying to hold on to this one point lead. They 
really need to put some more points on the board. Fumble. Dropped it. Blue Balls on ground. Yes. And Harrisburg got it back, or did LaMail get it? I think LaMail got the ball back. LaMail got in there and got it back. He saved it. Yep, two Cougars had a shot at it. And where did LaMail come from? I, I didn't see it. <laughs> Me either. It's awareness. i tell you what. Nightbauer has to understand when the play breaks down like Ray Fulman, he's got to secure that football. Watch this. I don't know who punched it away. Is that 34 again? Oh, that's Davis. Yeah, that's 40. Is that 20? Malik. No, that was 40. I don't know. No, I couldn't even see the number. I think, I think it was Young again. No bar on the keeper. Uh, nothing. Nothing there. Big play. And straightening him up over there is number. Turn around, young man, so we can give you some recognition here. <laughs> These numbers are so hard to read from here. It's like 22 <laughs> from my angle here. That would be Talik Tibbs, 5'670 pounds, senior. Now East is going backwards. Yeah. Neither <laughs> team looks like they want to win this ball. Right. Both teams are doing everything they can to give it to the other one. Last possession wins this game, I feel. 30, third and 20 from their own 15-yard line. They give it off. And there to LaMelle. He's going to be stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Not too many teams have plays third and 20. <laughs> if you do, you <laughs> Right. Because you can sell it. A whole lot of coaches. Oh, yes. At every level. <laughs> Usually a draw, screen, or pass. <laughs> and really, you know, I saw, actually, I did see a play uh, on television the other night from a college game that he ran the hook and ladder. Wow. On third and 20. Haven't seen that in a while. <laughs> Don't see that very often because it is a very dangerous play. Right. Now, CDE is having the same issues Harrisburg's having running off, running the player on. Last minute again. As a coach, that drives you nuts. Yes. Because you go over in your pregame the day before the game and you talk about it in the locker room. Mitch Walker, Walker has room. Got it at the 45, cuts it up, gets inside the 30, and run out of bounds at about the 29 yard line, where it'll be first and 10 for. This is Hasbro's chance. No, yeah, I mean, this is a short punt, a good yep. return. Set up in scoring territory at the 28 yard line. CDE. So first and 10, we'll go to receivers to either side. They have two tight ends of the ball game for the first time today for Harrisburg. Snell's the running back to the left of Clark. Clark. Looks, fakes, throws long for Walker. Caught. Out of bounds inside the 10 and the 9. Flag on the play. I think they may be getting high power for maybe a defensive holding. But if Harrisburg, you're going to take the play. Yes, you have to. <laughs> yep, push it off. It's the replay. That's great of ball awareness from Amici Walker. I'll tell you what, that, you know, not only ball awareness, but to know he's got to get just one foot down, and he got the right foot down. Watch this. That's a nice soft pass. Nice pass, but look at the look how he gets not only one, but he gets both feet in. Yeah. Guess that's why he goes to Temple. <laughs> so first and goal, actually, for the nine. Shelton Snell. 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 Nice Snell. run. So touchdown. So touchdown, Harrisburg. He runs Joe DeMel over. Yep, I tell you what, it's a short punt with a good return, sets up that, right. but after CDE he goes backwards on offense. Now what do you go for two here or you go for one? Uh, I think I think you have to go for two. You yes. have to put it into a touchdown and an extra point. I agree. Because if you don't, if CDE scores, the extra point can beat you. You're right. Now, can you tell I'm a former offensive player? Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice job of running. And it, I, cut, I call it running angry. See, Snell, I'll, high knees, just right. broke the tackle. I will follow Ritter and the Sawyer twins on this play. Yeah. I'd give it back to Snell. Clark, 
fakes, throws, in zone. Too much. Incomplete. I tell you what, he never gave Walker a chance. Never. But with 4.54 to play in the fourth quarter, Harrisburg reclaims the lead, 19-14 over Central Dolphin East. Do the Panthers have an answer? Back with more of the Great American Rivalry Series, brought to you by the U.S. Marine Corps and... Your Marine Corps way of life is to defend the American way of life. Every day, we take a stand for our nation, for each other, for us all. The few, the proud, the Marines. to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania in what has now become a very festive sideline along the Cougar sideline as they have taken the lead back 19-14. Kicked it to LaMelle. LaMelle. Off to the right. Dances, gets caught, dropped at the 20-yard line. Hasper's getting a momentum now, huh? That's a big mistake for every kickoff returner at every level. If you get up in the hole. Just run. Just run. Yeah. Uh, you want to get up there and dance, that, you know. It, it comes with science. Team's yeah. going down full speed one way. You're going the opposite way. Now you can make Kids. a cut, but yeah. how hard is it to teach a running back or a receiver or a return man to plant that outside foot as soon as he sees a crease and go? I think it comes from youth. I think when you're young, that's when you teach is, it. Is it more instinct, though? I think coaching? so. I think you're born with it. I mean, there's some good running backs. Like, you know, you have Shady McCoy from this area, and he's yeah. just, he's gifted. I mean, sometimes you're just born with it. Five hour. Throws it out on the flat, bobble, grabbed by Pollard. Up over the 25 to the 26, gain of six. Clock running up for 45 and moving. Best I've ever seen him doing that, though, might have been Barry Sanders. So he would see the, yeah. see the crease of, uh, he would plant that outside foot yeah. and cut it up. Barry was different. I'll, Barry go, was. <laughs> I'll go way back now. Guy yeah, was pretty good at it, was Gale Sayers. Gale, yes, Chicago <laughs> Bears. Yeah. Not too bad. Yeah. Showing my yeah. age now, yeah. coach. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm there with you. Age, I'm with you. Uh, you. I can relate. You age well, but you look, you look a lot younger. Oh, <laughs> uh -huh, thank you, sir. Nine hour. Pulls it down. Gets the first down over the 30, over the 35. Now over the 40, up to about the 42 yard line. They're going to need a new bower to make a play. Yeah. Go, he has to make some plays for them to pull this off. Well, but here's the thing, too. If you're, if you're Harrisburg, you know if, he, if you're. You're good in coverage, right. you've got to be able to yeah, keep him in the lane. Right. And you got to have, do you, have, do you spy somebody on him? You have to. You have to put your, your middle line back on him. You got to put somebody that can run because, you know, that's you watch it. That's though, because yeah. young. Yeah. You have to. a good ball game for Harrisburg is, is right. your middle linebacker. And you, have to, and you have to realize, if you watch the game, who barbed him running to the left every time? Five hour pitch just back to LaMail. Nice catch on this speed option. And oh, nice LaMail gets oh, hammered. And knocked out of bounds, but it, another. Quan Weeder, number down. eight. <laughs> nice hit. Yeah, nice hit. I tell you what, that was a nice job of reading the speed option. Watch this, coach. The speed option from Lamel going to the short side. Nice catch. The pitch was high. Yes. And he kept his concentration on knowing there were guys running at him. That was where they did it to the boundary. You know, well, usually you run an option like that to the field. Especially the speed option. Yes. To, go a little, to that, the wider side. That's a great call. Move the six. Five hour. Pulls it down. In trouble. Down he goes. Mumble. The ball came loose. I think he was, yep. That was a good call. But they said he's down. Yeah, he was down by, as the ball came loose. Boy, he's got, <laughs> he has got to secure yes. the football. He does. I think it was a good call. We're not going to have to replay it. didn't have it. Okay. It's close to being out again. He's had trouble with putting the ball on the ground this afternoon. He's having a great defensive game, yes. so it's, I guess you take the yin with the yang. I don't know. <laughs> if he makes a play for you here after this, right. then all's forgotten. He 
Jones up to the line. See the receivers, the winds of them on both sides. Lamel and a whistle and delay of game. Wow. Delay of game against CDE. That's kind of tough. Wow. Because now you've got momentum offensively. You're moving the football, and now Harrisburg's back on their heels a little bit. James McFarland just checked in again. He looks he looks taller than 5'7". <laughs> it must be must be the wrong number. Maybe. Gotta be. Okay, Traquan Presley, 6'1", 230. Yeah, that, that's better. Okay. That, that looks more like that. Yeah. Same formation from CDE. Receiver to the to the running back to the left of Nabauer. Oh, oh that's right. taller than taller than drill. That's number 15. Uh, Key Cowan. Yeah, he saved that game right there. He was now, by himself. Now 5'9", 175. Right. I can see that with him. Right. With a nice defensive play from Cowan. There's the replay. Set up third and long. Now watch it. We, we talked about coming underneath the blockers. I like he that. Okay. He just beat the block. And here's what I think is that Smith. Yeah, Smith has up. to make a block. Well, with Smith though, Smith waited on him. Yep. Yeah, that's perfect. perfect. Smith waited on him to yep. come to him. Yep. Smith attacks him. Then they have to have a play. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Been running got, for dead. Two eighteen clock running timeout. I think coming from Harrisburg. Nope. CDE. So now CDE down to one timeout left. This could hurt him. Let's go ahead and talk to him. Sergeant Sam, what's up? Doing fine. If you want to be joined by, just during this time, we'll just keep it right here, William. Is that okay? All right. Sergeant Sanford of the United States Marine Corps. How you doing? Sandville. Sandville. Okay, Sanville. we're on the same page uh, now. King, King, the band over here is awful loud. <laughs> so need more uh, amplified here. Uh, the involvement of the Marine Corps uh, with the Great American Rivalry Series is very well known. Uh, we had a, uh, we talk, I talked off camera with uh, Sergeant Weber earlier. Uh, what, what is the Marine Corps uh, look at why they wanted to get involved with the Great American Rivalry Series? Okay. Um, first of all, physical fitness is a big part of the Marine Corps, so it's good that our presence is out here involved with sports. And also want to give it back to the youth. You know, I don't expect everybody in both state, on both sides of the stadium to join the Marine Corps, but the onesies and twosies and share my good experiences from my six years in the Marine Corps with them. They threw it long there, and I believe that was for Pierce. Three. Incomplete. They'll bring up fourth and long now for CDE, who has to go for it here with the game on the line. Only one time out left. Also, too, with, with a physical nature of, of, say, a football game, uh, it teaches not only mental toughness, and everybody knows, you know, at any military thing, especially with the Marine Corps, you guys have to be mentally tough. I, mean, I say guys and gals now these days have to of be course. mentally tough. Of course. I want to be politically correct there. I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. What were you about to ask? No, I was going to let you answer. Um, yeah, that's definitely the case, and with football, there's a lot of leadership involved also. Like when I went up earlier for the um, towing calls, they had captains on both sides. That's just one small example of the leadership they have in football, and that also plays a big part in the Marine Corps with small unit leadership. We have plenty of kids, um, 18, 19 years old, as soon as they join, they're responsible for millions of dollars worth of equipment. So with the young, with this branch, a lot of young guys are put into leadership roles and to see if they have those leadership skills. Now, your involvement in the Marine Corps, how long have you been in? I've been in, in November, it'll be six years. Six years, now you can't be that old. Now I'm only 28. I was gonna say, I was gonna say 24. Oh, good, there good, go. good. There you go. <laughs> but as, as, as a Marine, what would you, what do you try to impart to these kids? Not, you know, you say you don't necessarily expect a lot of them to join, mm -hmm. uh, but what do you try to impart? Uh, were you an athlete yourself in high school? You know, that's crazy. Um, until I joined the military, I wasn't physical, physically active. And um, the biggest thing I try to tell these kids, I've been talking to a few of them here, big thing, physical fitness, stay active throughout your um, life because it can only benefit you. There are not really too many negatives in staying physically active. Wow. And um, professionalism every day, you know. Every time I see somebody, good morning, good afternoon. But professionalism and uh, physical fitness is a big thing that I talk to these young kids about. 
game was up probably on the line just then. You, I, you, I, I went into professional mail there broadcasting. You have a career then after, after you're done with the military. Okay. You won. But uh, Nybauer hit as he threw the ball. He completed fourth down, balls over to, to Harrisburg with 205 remaining. And I believe they uh, didn't see the use their last time out coach. So they're out of timeouts. I think he stopped the clock. One first down, and this game will be Harrisburg. But uh, have you been overseas, uh, over and seen action overseas? Um, Sergeant Weber had. And Sergeant Weber has. He had, actually had boots on the ground in Iraq, and I had a unique situation where a lot of people don't know. A lot of Marines deploy overseas with the Navy. And I had two opportunities to deploy on a U.S. carrier, the USS Harry S. Truman. Okay. And um, I was in a jet squadron, VMFA 312, F-18 Hornets. Okay. And I deployed twice, once in 2010, and I just got back in April of this year. We deployed overseas to support combat ops, and we stopped by in a couple countries. I went to France twice altogether, um, Greece, Spain. I've been to Dubai about seven times, and the Kingdom of Bahrain about four. Well, you can see the world. Oh, yes. Enjoying, right? Definitely. Well, we appreciate your service, and congratulations, and we applaud the Marine Corps and their involvement in the Great Marine I appreciate it, sir, and thank you for having me. Thank you. A fumble, and CDE gets it back. Are you serious, Coach? I tell you what, when you see some wild things in high school football games, especially rivalry games, watch this. All you have to do is pick up one first down. That's it. Secure the football. And I believe that's Amici Walker trying to make a play and a huge play. And I believe that was That was the was that Perez? No, 58. That was more. That, that was more. More more than 15 actually forced the fumble. Who was but, that? But that was the quarterback. All you had to do was just hand it to the running back. Brandon yeah. Anderson Brooks forces the fumble, and then Moore comes up with a fumble recovery, and CDE has life. Diff they have a different quarterback in. And he hasn't seen the field all day. Jacobs throws the ball deep, incomplete. Just out of the reach of Elon, who they haven't looked for since the first quarter. Coach. Right. See, last play, I, I blame that kind of on the coaching. I would just give the ball to the running back, fall down, eat the clock. Biggest, you know. biggest faux pas in football yep. I've ever seen was with the New York Giants had to give the ball to the running back with fumble. Herm Edwards shanks it get you on the and goes game. for six. Yep. Sometimes, and we all do it, all coaches think, try to outthink themselves. Yep. Second and ten, a minute twenty to go. CDE with the second life and a timeout. Harrisburg. And I don't think they have enough players on field, coach. No, they had 11. They just want to put another DB in. Yeah. I was going to say, look, I, only, I thought I counted 10, and that may be the truth. Back with more of the Great American Rivalry Series, Harrisburgs and CDE. Brought to you by the U.S. Marine Corps and Toyota. Whew, you have to be crazy to go outside in this heat, like Harry. I saw him leaving this morning with that new water thing of his. It's like a snowmobile that floats. Doesn't he worry about being swept out to sea? Or sharks? You're gonna eat that thing all over yourself. Some people want more out of life, and we ensure the things that make more possible. Safeco Insurance. Find a local agent at safeco.com. Green pass incomplete. They look for Lamel out in space here on the near side. It incomplete, nicely defended by Little for Harrisburg. It'll be now third and ten with 117 to play in the ball game. Joined by Sergeant Weber here. And Sergeant will get to you in just a second of the U.S. Marines. Jacobs in trouble. Down he goes, and the ball came loose and it's picked up by Harrisburg, and that. Should do it with a minute nine to go. Should. <laughs> See, too many funny things happen in this ball game, and I'm sure with Sergeant Weber standing here to my left of the U of the Marine Corps, I, you probably see some funny things in your lifetime in the Marines. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> There's never a dull moment. Never a dull moment? Of course. Now, were you an athlete in school? Uh, yes, I was. Did you play football? Yes, I did. Uh-huh. And where, did, where may we ask? <laughs> I grew up in a small town in between uh, Pittsburgh and Erie, Pennsylvania. It's a very uh -huh. small farm so town. There you go. So, uh, we played football up there. I was a linebacker. Okay, a linebacker. Yes, sir. Uh 
I wouldn't see that. So I would have pictured maybe as a DB, but linebacker, but you may have the mentality. We talked a little bit to you off off the air a moment ago, something happened with our interview uh, earlier today, but we asked you, you know, about your involvement in the Marine Corps, how long you've been in, and, and, and how much has, has the Marine Corps meant to you? Uh, the Marine Corps, honestly, is probably one of the greatest things I've ever done with my life. It's uh, something that I'll never regret, and it's always been a great experience. Well, as we just spoke just now, a fumble on the play, and now CDE has one more chance. <laughs> and, and in fitting, both teams are, are, are nicknamed after felines. And what are felines known for? Nine lives. Exactly. <laughs> you know, <laughs> wow, watch this. Just take, here. Just take, just take a knee. Did he lose control of the ball trying to hand it off? Or just snap? He didn't take the snap. It never came. It. Never came up. Wow. Wow, no, just unbelievable. So. You stay right here. We've got a lot of weird things happening down here. I know going to get a pick once. I know going to throw a pick once. I'm Justice. Jacobs will sit back and throw. Nice catch by it. That's Pearson. And the open field tackle inside the 15. He breaks a tackle inside the 10 down to the 4 with 53 seconds to play. And folks, it's not over. I know this is football, but Yogi Bear says it ain't over until it's over, right? Unbelievable. Wow. Five yard line, first and goal. The clock will start. 53 seconds to play. CD E with a chance to take the lead. But if that happens, don't go anywhere, folks. Because Harrisburg has a chance. And Jacobs will intentionally ground the ball, gives us a chance to talk to Coach we or to Sergeant Weber a little bit more. Uh, ever since you took the mic, we've had three really wild things happen. Uh, I don't know if that's you or... I've always been told that the weirdest things tend to happen when I'm around. When you're around? Yes. Uh, I would ask you the weirdest thing, but we maybe get run off the air. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, what, what was your personal... Let me call this play real quick, because we may be looking at a lead change here. 51 seconds to play. Jacobs looks, throws, incomplete. It might have been batted down. And I believe that was Damian Barber. 6'4", 220, and a sophomore. As a sophomore, I wasn't that big. As a 40-something-year-old, I'm not that big. But uh, what was your – I know you had a chance to speak with some of these young guys, and I'm not just saying some of the players, but – some of the young men and women in the crowd. What was your message to them? Uh, my message to them was, you know, we're here to help support and build your community. You know, and like I was saying earlier, so long as you are successful in your own eyes, that's all that matters. Well, wouldn't you know it, Coach Schrader, the, the throwing quarterback, runs it in for a touchdown. <laughs> Justice Jacobs, who is known more for his throwing ability than his running ability, gives CDE the lead at 20 to 19 with 45 seconds to play and if you are can hear me through the glass in the press box Harrisburg fans don't go anywhere there's 45 seconds still left and how many weird things have we seen in the last two minutes it's not over it is not over wow unbelievable uh boy i have some to talk about when i get back home tonight a lot of people won't believe this one interesting call here I'm going to put you back into your football days. If you were the coach of CDE, Coach Plandings, you've got to go for two. What play call you call here? you got to make it, whereas Harrisburg at least needs a field goal to tie you. Wow, that would be a difficult, difficult decision to make. <laughs> that really would. And this coming from a Marine, folks. He has to make <laughs> split-second decisions in the line of fire. He's going to run Those, are <laughs> Those are easy. <laughs> Those are easy? Those are easy. Coming out with the game plan, that's the problem. <laughs> Didn't mean to throw you that, but, but we, we applaud you guys. I mean, I, I have a, a, a father who served, and my brother is currently in the United States uh, Army National Guard. I applaud you young men and women, Marines and everybody alike, but you guys and women do things where we can come out here and enjoy a Saturday afternoon of high school football. Well, thank we you. We really do appreciate it. And we love to have you along with, with the Great American Rivalry Series. It's been, what, 10 years now? Yep, 10 years with the Marine Corps and the Great American Rivalry Series have been together. Well, you will stick around. You've been, you've been, you you brought us some weird things here. Let's <laughs> let's see how this turns out. Jacobs, come on, 
looks, throws, yes. it is batted down. And now all you need to do if you're Harrisburg is to get into field goal range. And I don't know what kind of range that, that Davis has, but we'll see what happens. You want to stick around for 45 more seconds? <laughs> Or, I know you have some out, yeah, you have some post game stuff that you have to get done. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sergeant yes, Weber again. Thank you for your service. Of and course, being a lot of Marine Corps for everything you do, not only for our country but the Great American Rivalry Series as well. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sergeant Weber and Sergeant Sandville, both of them up here joining us in the fourth quarter. And Coach Ritter, hey, thanks for he said yes, he had always. Sergeant Weber said, I don't know if you heard him. I asked him. I said, man, a lot of weird things have happened. He goes, people say weird things happen when I'm around. <laughs> In the last minute and 25 seconds, we saw a lot of wild things. We saw three fumbles, right. a broken tackle on a busted uh, play that thrown for a, a huge game for CD. And then we see the running quarter or the uh, passing quarterback, passing quarterback running, running for a touchdown. Yes. <laughs> what else can we see happen? Hey, it's not over. 45 seconds. Uh, what else can we see happen? Here? I ask that question again. Well, uh, well, one if I'm thing CD we CD East. I don't care. I, I do not kick this thing deep. No, nope. I want to squib it somewhere and make him drive it. Now, <laughs> <laughs> news is Harrisburg has at least two timeouts left. Well, we know there's no overtime, so it's coming down to it now. Which, which camera is that? This was kicked oh. deep, right down the middle of the field. Little bobbles, picks it up and touch back. That's a rule. That, that's a part of that rule I still don't right. understand. He touches it in the field of play and it goes into the end zone. Right. He, he should be able to advance. He, he still should, should be able to advance. Right, I think so. I'm, I'm all. I'm a proponent for the high school rule to be changed totally. You have such good kickers now at the high school level. Right. Let those advance good returners it. bring it out. I agree. Or move it back to the 35. I agree. I agree. It's just me. Because that's exciting. That's a big part. Like I said, special teams is 130 to game. Right. And you know how much influence I have on the National Rules Committee? <laughs> zero. <laughs> that makes two of us. Even being in this business for 30 years, I have zero effect. I wonder why the coach didn't take a knee. He will be questioned then, I'm sure. Mark, empty in the backfield. Three receivers to the right, one or two back to the left. They bring Little in motion. They throw it back to the right side. This is... Is that Walker? Yes, Michi Walker. Yeah, Michi Walker. Yes. yes. And a flag, and I think they're going to get a face mask on CD with 37 seconds to play. <laughs> it's not over. Wow. I know one thing. As soon as this game does end, I'm going to have to take a seat because I'm exhausted. <laughs> the Harrisburg High School band just continued to go, and I just watched them made me tired. Right. <laughs> These two teams here going back and forth the way they're doing, trying to give each other a chance to win. It was a five-yard face mask penalty tacked on to the end of the run. Clock's moving. Clock running now with two timeouts. Clark marks out the signals. It's the snap. Steps up. What a run. It's up over the 40. Shoved out of bounds by Moore at the 42-yard. Make the 43-yard line. 21 seconds. 21 seconds and eternity. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Eight of 12. First and 10 for... Harrisburg. You need probably a good, what, 35 yards more to maybe give Davis a chance? At least. But Davis missed one today, so he's, I think, a little bit more. Clark with three receivers to the left, two to the right. Steps back, four man rush. Fires it out here to Little. Breaks the tackle at the 50. Into CD territory, down to the 13 seconds. Yard line with 13 seconds to play. Now, Take the time out. CD, if you're in Harrisburg, you've got to sit down. I'm already tired. <laughs> it's going to be. If you're Harrisburg, you've got, you're going to spike the ball here, I think. Fox running with 11 seconds. He spikes it. 10 seconds to go in, in the ball game. Enough time for two plays. Now, you've been around this rivalry a long time. Yes. Have you had the finish we were about ready to have with this? Last, last year was just as good. You had um, a nice running back named Chase Edmonds. He's actually the MVP of the Big 33. And. Hasberg was up and Chase came back and then Hasberg ended up winning. Now, so have it's, you seen as many wild plays though in this rivalry? Can you expect that for this week? team? It's, they're mirrors. It's a mirror team. Three, they're the same. Same formation. Three to the left, two to the right. You gotta take a shot soon. Nice. Gotta take a shot. Maybe take it now. Gotta take a Stay shot. Up. Hold the ball too long. Uh, uh, Harrisburg can't, can't stop the clock. They're out of timeouts as well. The ball game is over. You only blitz in three. You have you have to take a chance. Yep. Wow. 
What a finish. I didn't realize Harrisburg had already used their timeouts. Me either. Me either. Unbelievable finish. Three turnovers, a number of penalties, and it came down to the final play for the and Harrisburg unable to execute, and they fall 20 to 19. That hurts. That hurts their season. That is a tough, tough loss. E and it really, either team loses, that makes it a very, very tough loss yes. for either side, no matter who lost here this afternoon. We'll be back. Coach Ritter and I will do our wrap-up. And don't know if we'll have any stats or not. We'll recap a wild finish to this one in the last three minutes of this one. And then uh, we'll wrap up things here from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Final score again was Central Dolphin East 20, Harrisburg 19. Back with more from the Great American Rivalry Series here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania on a beautiful Saturday afternoon for football. And it's been brought to you by the U.S. Marine Corps. Let's go out. Let's go out. Great. What a story in history this rivalry has. Today we expect these two teams to fight head to head. Big rivalry game gives now to Hughes. Hughes and he is going to Touchdown. get in. Touchdown. One of the top 25 high school rivalry games in the country. It, it's just, it's awesome. The fans just go crazy. Being broadcast across the globe to the Marines and our military personnel worldwide. Look for a block. He's free. Touchdown. The thing about rivalries is, it doesn't matter what kind of season you're having. You win this game, it's a big season, it's a big win. Welcome to the 2014 Great American Rivalry Series, presented by the United States Marines, AT&T, and Safeco Insurance on the Rivalry Series Broadcast Network. Next up, we'll head to New Jersey for some big North Conference United Division play when Bergen Catholic faces St. Joseph Regional for the 45th time in a Saturday afternoon matchup. Two of New Jersey's top programs, the Bergen Catholic Crusaders, have 16 state titles and are looking to prove they are truly one of the elite non-public programs in the area, coming off a 2-7 and seven season in 2013. They have been focused on improving their defense, since this year's loss to St. Peter's Prep. Key defensive players include Kyle Cook and Connor O'Brien. The Crusaders also possess one of the region's most highly prized quarterbacks, Jarrett Guarantano, a national level recruit. Look for them to utilize a group of sure-handed receivers complemented by the hard-nosed running of halfback Corey Russo. Ranked number one in New Jersey in 2012, the Green Knights will be a tough matchup. Coach Hoffman of St. Joe Regional is focused on tightening up the details this season, while quarterback Jack Walsh says the focus has to be discipline. The Green Knights have won the last three state titles and have won 11 championships since 2000. In the last nine years, no less than seven players from these teams have joined the ranks of the NFL. Check out the live game broadcast online at GreatAmericanRivalry.com on Saturday, October 18th at 12.30 p.m. And be sure to join the Rivalry Series Twitter stream using hashtag AmericanRivalry. Back at... Severance Field in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Harrisburg High School's campus, Central Dolphin East, the Great American Rivalry champion today with a 20 to 19 exciting come from behind <laughs> victory. Uh, uh, I don't think there's an adjective or a group of adjectives that I come up with no. much to uh, to uh, <laughs> to uh, uh, describe uh, the last two minutes of this one. It was interesting. It came down to... That might be the best one to come up with. It was interesting. <laughs> it, it, it ended how it started, with the fumbles. Yeah. The game ended how it started, with all the fumbles. You know? And uh, unfortunately for the Cougars of Harrisburg High School, they had the final fumble that yep. really was the nail in their coffin and yep. gave uh, CDE the last gasp effort and then the big pass play from Nybauer to... Um, Evan Pierce, yeah, uh, and then a great run after the catch from Pierce. He broke a couple of tackles, 
at about the 20 and the 15 yard line respectively and then got it down uh, inside the, the 10 to the 5 yard line and it was just absolutely uh, uh, interesting the last two minutes but uh, a game that um, if you're uh, CDE you can build on right. in a positive way right. and if you're Harrisburg and the coaching staff uh, tough tough loss and very difficult now to get that team refocused yes. next week for next week's game. Right, because that's three for Hashburg. That's three losses in a row, which and is all three which is rare. The same way. Not, yes, not necessarily that finish, but a lot coming down the last few minutes or so of the, yeah. of the fourth quarter. So it's going to be hard for them to rebuild. I mean, Coach Blanding has centered off and he's playing high. I mean, they believe in him, and they're playing good. You know, they play, they beat Cumberland Valley last week, which was rare. Shut them out, which is something we've never heard of. To ever somebody to shut Cumberland Valley out, so. Central Dolphin East is the positive right now. You know, Hashburg's going to have to rebuild, and hopefully they can pull everything off. How tough is it for the coaching staff at Harrisburg now to immediately erase this memory from uh, this game from, from their, their ball club's mind? How tough is it? I, I think it's, it's very difficult. I mean, to me, I talked to Coach Cow, and I believe Hashburg has the tough – he's the ha hardest coaching job in the state of Pennsylvania. I mean, you're dealing with a lot of inner-city kids and different – different types of people in in this heart. I mean the coaching staff is a lot of volunteers. There's not a lot of money in the city to be the only really true city team. It, it's it's very hard. I mean his numbers for him to be a quiet team, they they don't even have a lot of numbers. You know, usually when you look at a Hashburg team, you see at least eighty to ninety type of players. You know, out there we look you might see thirty, thirty five. You know? It's unheard of to have actually see Hashburg got guys going both ways. And especially at this level. Four, yes. Four A. Four A. Four classes. Yes. Very difficult. And Hashburg's one of the biggest teams, you know. So it's it's hard for them to get the kids. Yeah. Well, Coach, uh, enjoyed working with you today. It's oh, I appreciate been a lot of fun. Uh, my first trip up into this area, as far as uh, football is concerned, or any right. athletic endeavor. Uh, uh, come up here on vacation a couple times, but okay. nothing more than that. But. Just a great environment here, and I think our, our viewers out there were treated to a, a, a great ball game. It wasn't the prettiest. Right, it wasn't the prettiest. It comes to execution as far as the <laughs> coach. Now, you and I both right. as coaches will we'll, we'll say that it wasn't the best execution no, game. No, not at all. But I think uh, our viewers out there can really say both teams really, really played very hard today. Right, I agree. I agree. And I appreciate y'all coming up and spending some time with us today. No. No, it was a long trip, but very much well worth it, <laughs> that's for sure. So, for Coach... Warren Ritter on color, all our fine cameramen and our producer, William Warfield, as well as the U.S. Marine Corps, Toyota, Safeco, and AT&T, as well as the two schools, Central Dolphin East High School and Harrisburg High School. We really think the hospitality is really great up here in South Central Pennsylvania. So the final score of the final time from Harrisburg was Central Dolphin East 20 and Harrisburg 19. So long. Till next time. Your Marine Corps' way of life is to defend the American way of life. Every day, we take a stand for our nation, for each other, for us all. The few, the proud, the Marines.